Hey guys, so we're back again with another reading and this one is all about a message meant to find you. So this is a message from your team on the other side, from your angels, your ancestors, and from spirit. And whenever you stumble across it, that is the perfect time for you to be watching this. And if it's your first pick a card reading, you want to go towards the one your energy feels called to and pulled to. A great practice is to take a breath, kind of relax, and then just see which pile is calling your name and go with your first instinct don't second guess it. That will be the one with the message for you guys. And I'm going to pop the numbers up on the screen of each of the piles in just a moment. I do want to mention to you guys that I also have my Patreon up and I have a ton of additional readings over there. I just posted a reading all about what divine feminine archetype you embody. So it's a great one if you want to tap into your divine feminine goddess energy and see which seductive archetype you fit into. And there's a ton of additional readings over there that are serious and then lighthearted and we have all kinds of readings so definitely check it out link in my description for my patreon if you want to watch those and if you want a private one-on-one -on -one reading with me to find out more about whatever subject you desire and to have my undivided attention you can get that at the link in my description briarrosetarot.com and set up a private one-on-one -on -one session with me so with that being said i am going to pop the numbers up on the screen so you can see which of the piles is which and if you guys need more time to decide you can totally feel free to rewind pause and take as much time as you need but we are going to go ahead and jump into pile one Hey, Bell One. So we're doing things a little bit differently today and starting off with some Oracle cards. So you guys got Balancing Act and Bone Collector. So Bone Collector is a card that can talk about how in life we can kind of give parts of ourselves away and also kind of accumulate trauma, accumulate these maladaptive coping mechanisms. And so I almost feel like for you guys in Pile 1, maybe some of these issues have come up lately. Like maybe you've found yourself kind of triggered. It is a very powerful full moon that we just went through the full moon in Capricorn, which was aspecting Pluto. And Pluto can certainly bring up traumas, um, really painful memories and that kind of a thing. And I feel like there's a really beautiful message here that it is through our traumas that we can actually find healing. And as painful as it is when like a, a hard memory comes up or a difficult situation, that's kind of the pathway to healing. And in a way, it's giving that part of ourselves back. Um, it's painful to realize it, but that's what we have to do. I What's coming to my mind is the image of like opening your fridge and you're hit with a really nasty smell and you're like, wait, what is this? What is smelling so bad? Why does my kitchen stink? Um, and you realize maybe there's like a discarded um, little plastic thing of strawberries that like you forgot about and it's in the back of the fridge behind like some mustard, you know, jars and you realize that that was there for a while and now it's moldy and you've got to like fish it out, dump it in the trash and throw it away. Um, but you wouldn't get mad at the smell. You wouldn't get mad to be like, oh my God, my kitchen smells bad and just let it stay like that. The smell you would probably appreciate as like, it's alerting me to the fact that there's these rotting strawberries in the back of my fridge and I'd rather get them out so they don't contaminate all the other food. And so I think sometimes when we get triggered by situations or painful things come up, it can be really difficult to deal with that. It can be really difficult to process, like, why are things not going my way? Why did this person have to talk to me so rudely? Or why did this really unpleasant situation come up? But that is kind of the gateway we can follow to see, like, okay, there's a little wound here. Kind of like, you know, you have a sunburn when you hit, you know, when you like touch your back or you touch your skin and it burns or it it hurts. You don't necessarily, you can't always tell just from looking at your skin, maybe if it's on your back or something, you won't be able to see it. But you'll be able to feel it if you like hit the, you know, hit your back or something. That's when you know like, oh, my skin got damaged. And so now I need to go put on aloe vera and all these things. And so um, I think for some of you guys with this full moon, maybe something came up where you found yourself really upset or you found yourself... Um, you know, like, why am I so bothered by this? And I feel like for you guys, there's a message that 
it's through those painful events that you can find your healing. And as much as it may be difficult to deal with that, and it's not excusing anyone else's behavior, and they'll have their own karma if you got treated badly by someone. But in a way, I think wondering or questioning like why was I so upset by something or why did something get under my skin to that extent and kind of following that path to its logical conclusion like okay what was the first time I felt this way what was the first time I felt powerless or angry about something that was out of my control or you know fill in the blank sad depressed um sometimes it's those small things like why am I so bothered that like my friend didn't um let me know that they were going out to eat together on Friday like why does that really bother me and then maybe you felt left out as a child or something like that and it's always interesting to see like when was the first time I felt this way and what was kind of the root of this and 90% of the time when you follow it and kind of face that emotion it's like oh it's really not a big deal and sometimes what's coming up for some people is it might even be dysfunctional things like a dysfunctional relationship with food or um, any I think the thing with addiction is like any addiction and it can be eating too much it can be shopping too much it can be eating too little it can be um, working out too much it can be anything anything that takes us out of ourselves is a way we have of kind of balancing our emotions and trying to trying to like avoid the painful stuff when the reality is it's probably not that bad and the more we avoid it the more we refuse to take a look at it um, the more it's going to grow and I think there's a lovely message with the bone collector that at any moment we can choose to come back to this beautiful perfect peaceful version of ourselves that we had as a child when we were kind of a blank slate of purity um, and I think in some way that's the goal of like doing all the shadow work and doing spiritual stuff is we want to get back to that kind of purest version of ourselves when we were like an innocent little kid and to know that that's possible like no matter what we've been through we still have that same soul you know that came here to this planet and it's not really penetrable by anything else there might be bad things that happen but i can say as someone who does private readings that like your soul like the soul you have um i don't know how else to put it but that little core of you that's outside of any event it's not affected by like stuff like that difficult things horrible things even even the worst things it's that same little kernel of like a personality and that's why usually on the other side most of the time people are just really happy and like they don't care about anything that happened on earth because they know it was a growth opportunity. And it's not to say that I'm dismissing like um, real trauma and stuff or justifying it or saying like, hey, get over it and it's not a big deal and they didn't do anything wrong. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying we have an amazing resilience that I think sometimes we don't talk about in our society. And it's not to say you don't kind of acknowledge trauma because it's actually through acknowledging it that we release but it's also knowing that that little star that you are that little kind of kernel of light at the very bottom of any difficulties you might have faced any trauma any dysfunction that's still as bright as it was the day you incarnated on earth it's still so bright and precious and beautiful and i think sometimes we're rushing around we're trying to do a lot of things and it can be easy to just kind of run away from our emotions and run away from the difficult things that come up run away from the painful stuff by distracting ourselves especially nowadays when there's a million fun ways to distract ourselves whether it's you know eating something because food is like cheap and plentiful now or it was <laughs> prices have gone up but you know um still compared to like how it used to be where it was like this it's like you didn't really have a lot of food options now we can still like go cook something or get some cheap junk food or it might be like playing video games or going online or even watching YouTube, you know? And um, sometimes I think the most important thing is just giving yourself a moment to pause and to listen and to hear what spirit has to say. And it's funny because whenever you find yourself in a dysfunctional energy, it's so hard to do it usually that's like the hardest time when you like don't want to do that that's the last thing you want to do because you're in this energy of running but when you kind of turn around and face it and just are like what am I feeling how am I feeling and don't allow yourself to give into kind of the pressures of like 
oh, well, actually, I should do this. I should do that. Let me go here. Oh, this would be interesting. Why don't I try this? Oh, why don't I go there? Like, sometimes when you meditate, those feelings will come up at first. And it's almost like your mind telling you, like, run from this situation. Run from this, emotionally speaking. I don't want to think about, you know painful childhood stuff or I don't want to think about like my first heartbreak or I don't want to think about all the things that are sad so I'm just gonna go and distract myself with something else and I think that what's amazing to realize is that those things have no power over you you know what I mean and when you stop and you face them most of the time it's like oh this was not a big deal why did I why did I spend so much energy running from this when I could just face it and I'm and I'm so much stronger than whatever this is and I feel like a lot of you guys are purging some trauma and um if those things are coming up or if you found yourself dealing with like toxic people or just toxic situations and something really difficult has been brought to your attention i think that you need to know that it's okay and i think that some of these things are about unpacking the the di dysfunctional ways we learn to behave to deal with trauma or to deal with just the difficulty of like modern life you know feeling like we always have to be super productive feeling like we always have to be um stoic with our emotions we're not maybe you have a family that told you like you were a crybaby if you would cry so you learn to stuff them down or so many different ways we can use to kind of run away from like our emotions and to adapt into dysfunctional ways of living that we just have to do nowadays and i think that for a lot of you guys you're moving through a lot of this you're purging it and the message is to kind of allow those things as painful as they are to happen allow not to say to accept bad behavior i'm definitely not saying that and i think that probably for a lot of people in this group it's learning to respect your boundaries um with balancing act it could be that some of you guys are taking on too much you might have people pleaser tendencies you might be someone who you know does a lot for everyone else and it's a coping mechanism you have because you're kind of deep down afraid of what's going to happen if you say no or if or if you're not productive like you might even have a traumatic view of relationships where if you're not adding value if you're not providing something to someone you just think why would anyone want to hang out with me why would anyone want to be around me unless i'm like doing a million things so i think it's not to say like hey just welcome in dysfunctional people it's good to have boundaries. It's important to have boundaries. But if spirit has brought something up and those feelings have come up, take it as an opportunity to process it and to realize like, oh, I didn't know I had a wound there. Let me clean that out and get it back to normal. Just like when you see those rotten strawberries in the fridge, you can just take them out and throw them in the trash. You don't have to carry them around forever. You don't, It's not like, oh, I'm going to be permanently now have rotten strawberries in my fridge for the rest of my life. I think sometimes our society can do a a little bit of a disservice to trauma victims this is my personal opinion because they act like it's like a life sentence and it's like forever you're now going to be this person that faced that and in a way like yes you will be because you know that's what happened but it's not it doesn't change your identity and that core of who you are deep in your soul and that be bright beautiful light you have just like even if you had a nasty refrigerator and trust me i've watched enough episodes of hoarding buried alive to realize this um you can still clean it out you'd be surprised by what they can do with those fridges on that show um and how they look before versus after and even the most rotten one they can like clean out and make it shining bright white or silver or whatever color it was at the beginning um, and just looking as good as new so i think we all need to know that that you know there's this kind of little seed and kernel inside of us that's so bright and untouched by any of the pain or difficulty that might have faced us and i think that you guys need to know that for some reason maybe you've been feeling down on yourself or you've been feeling kind of damaged or sometimes when these traumas or triggers come up we think i'm always gonna have to deal with this i'm always gonna be stuck with this i'm always gonna be really like having to be walking on eggshells and avoiding this but actually it's through facing something head on that it kind of dissipates and i think for you guys um you're a lot of you guys are doing that right now um let me get some tarot cards for pile one spirit can we get some tarot cards for pile one wow the sun oh my gosh that's so amazing 
So this is such a positive thing that is happening. And again, it might not seem that way. It might seem really difficult that you're having to face this stuff and like, why is like, this is such a negative event that I can't believe this, this trauma was brought up and it's just so dark, but it's actually so bright and beautiful. And you guys are a bright soul. You guys are this beautiful soul that nothing can touch, nothing can make you any less pure and special and just gorgeous than you, than you are. And I think some of you guys, if you've been doing a lot of trauma work, if you've been kind of mired in this for a while, you are going to be coming out of it and things are going to be a lot brighter and things are going to be so much happier. Um, yeah. And a lot of things I think you know, sometimes I think when trauma is being purged a lot of it, it's because we are being prepared for a new level in our lives. We're being prepared for something greater that we're ha we are going to step forward into. And so as much as it may be difficult in that moment to process like, why is this happening? It's actually like that final stage, kind of like the boot camp before they let you graduate into like being officially in the military or like the final week of rehearsals before you go on stage for your play or something, you know? Um, so it's kind of that final like burst of training that we need to prepare us for that next stage. Let me get some more cards for pile one. What message do you have for pile one? Okay, so we got the spear king, and that's the king of wands reversed. And then we got the round table, which is the wheel of fortune. So this is a really positive spread for you guys. You guys are coming into an amazing time of luck and things going your way. And I could cry almost because I feel like some of you guys have had really hard lives in this pile. And this is going to be so amazing for you and you deserve it so much and this it feels like it's a long time coming like some of you guys have really dealt with some very intense hardships and stuff and this new era for you I feel like your guides and your angels are so proud of you guys for getting through it and they can see how strong and tough you guys have had to be and I think you're ready for this new era and what's coming to my mind with the king of wands being reversed is like it's almost like you don't have to fight anymore and the balancing act kind of talks about that the balancing act card talks about easiness like taking it easy and some of sometimes people who grew up in like traumatic situations or difficult family systems I think they carry on this idea that like I don't really deserve love or I always have to be fighting or I always have to be getting kind of the short end of the stick and that's just how it goes like everyone else gets kind of a nice life but then me I just get you know, a difficulty thrown at me and that's okay. And they just kind of normalize or accept that. And they might even turn into a bit of a fighter because of that. They might become someone who like is willing, is like eager to take offense or, or just eager to put up a fight with anything, like almost like something that doesn't have anything to do with them. And they're going to swoop in and they're going to be like, Hey, this shouldn't be going on. And I mean, in a way, it's a beautiful instinct to have to like want to help others or to want to fight for what's right. But sometimes it's like, why do you have to be the warrior every time? And maybe you're tired and maybe you're exhausted and maybe you're ready to put down this fear and, you know, just kind of relax. And I feel like there's a powerful message for you guys that some of you guys have been fighting a battle for a really long time that's not yours to fight. And almost like you might find you have an overactive nervous system or something and you go into fight mode easily or you get really agitated about something or like something small happens and you're just like set off. Like your nervous system, stress levels, cortisol, you're ready to like go into battle. Uh, people with really dysfunctional childhoods a lot of times are that way. Um, and yeah, people also, if you have like Mars opposite the moon, there's a bunch of different placements that can kind of talk about these things. Um, but I feel like for you guys, this is about learning to relax. This is about you guys coming into an era of your life where I feel like some of you guys have never even asked, like, what do I want? What do I want to do? Not what do I have to do? Not what do people expect from me? Not what do people um, think I deserve? Because maybe some of you guys are surrounded by people that don't think you deserve 
stuff. Maybe you had parents that would talk down on you or say like, you're really dumb or, you know, who do you think you are? Do you think, oh, really? You think you're just going to make money like that easily? And the balancing act card is about easiness. It's about welcoming in that Venus energy that just flows so easily. That's just like, I deserve everything. And it comes to me and I don't even have to, like, I don't have to break my back for it. I don't have to be, um, in a painful state in like this energy of like hardship all the time i can just welcome in beauty and love and happiness no matter what um so yeah i feel like a lot of you guys are coming into that era now where things are just going to start going your way and you guys are going to be kind of surprised and shocked by how beautiful life can be and i think you can you can come into this energy faster by kind of calming your nervous system, calming down. Even I'm seeing chamomile tea or lavender tea. You can also buy like lavender pills um, or valerian and stuff like that. But of course you wanna use all kind of medical supplements of any kind at all um, with caution and make sure that like you react well and all those things um, because I'm not a doctor. So yeah, I can't prescribe anything, but I am saying that, you know, there are teas you can drink that kind of calm you down. And maybe you find that naturally you're not the calmest person because of this. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, maybe have a little nice cup of chamomile tea and just calm down and relax and wind down at the end of the day. And for some of you guys, this is like not going into habits that take you out of yourself and your moment like not eating too much because you get stressed and like you run and grab a bag of chips but are those chips even making you feel any better a lot of times when we're doing stuff like that what we're really craving is that feeling of calmness and acceptance connection with spirit and we're never going to get that with a bag of chips <laughs> one of my favorite books um Women, Food, and God by Janine Roth. And she says it's kind of like someone who's really thirsty um, in the desert, like haven't had water for days and they just start drinking sand. You know, it's like, it's not going to make it any better. It might be something to occupy you in the meantime, but when we're craving that connection with spirit, when we're craving that feeling of like connection with the divine, then food, like a little bat, like a few potato chips or some cake or anything, um, even my beloved ice cream is not going to compare to that beautiful connection with God. And it's not to say you don't have anything to eat. I'm not saying that at all. But um, to like, I think being present in the moment, being present with ourselves, getting in touch with ourselves and being able to feel how we're really feeling allows us to even be more present with our food anyway and to really enjoy that ice cream when we're eating it rather than like gobbling down a gallon and not even we're like, what just happened? What did I just eat? Because you're just so, you're like stress eating, barely in your head, just overwhelmed. And I feel like a lot of you guys are coming out of this energy and you're going to be blown away by how sweet and beautiful life can be let me get some astro dice for pile one okay so we got the 12th house we got neptune and we got sagittarius so a lot of neptune energy coming up and so for you guys i really feel like this is about 12th house is about hidden things 12th house and neptune and pisces is about kind of those secret hidden parts of ourselves that maybe they don't even come up at first. Maybe for a while, we're just kind of, they're so deep, they're so buried that it's hard for us to even perceive what's going on there. It's hard for us to even know that like there's a wound there or there's a problem um, because it can be very buried. That's why Neptune is kind of delusional. Um, but as painful as it might be, the act of going through and finding those wounds and kind of slowly cleaning them out. I always compare this to like, you know, when you get cleaned out with that orange stuff, I think it's called, I, I don't remember what it's called, um, but you know, it's like the orange stuff in the bottle when your mom cleans your wounds when you're a kid. Um, and yeah, it burns so badly. Um, I don't know if it's hydro something but anyway um, it burns really badly or iodine maybe it's iodine but it burns so bad when it's going on and um but the the thing is what if your mom just didn't clean it out and she just like say you had been riding your bike and you scraped your you like totally crashed it and you fell this happened to me as a kid and um you had like all these cuts and scrapes and 
say your mom was just like, oh, whatever. Okay. Anyway, see you later. Um, that would be way worse because all the little gravel that had gotten inside your, you know, cut as gross as that may sound would just heal right over. It would heal into the skin and, and your skin would cover it, but the gravel would still be there. It would be really bad for you. And in fact, people used to die from like cuts and infections for most of human history. It was like a big deal, not because of the actual cut or blood loss or anything, but because of infections that would come in at the time. That's why it's so important to clean you know, to clean a wound out, to like rinse it out or clean it with soap at least and, you know, bandage it back up or whatever. Um, because if we don't, as painful as it might be in the moment, it's way more painful if we just let it fester like that and infection sets in. So when we're doing that shadow work and we're purging the hardship and the pain and the, the hurt, um, it can be really painful, but it's so much better than the alternative. And then we got Sagittarius. And it's really interesting because both of these have ancient rulers of Jupiter, but then we have Neptune for sure. So there is Neptune energy specifically, but also there's Jupiter. And I think that something that comes to my mind with that as a commonality that Jupiter has is it's really the house or it's really a planet of kind of expansion, mental expansion, but in different ways. Sagittarius is kind of that way of being physically involved in the world, traveling, literally learning in like a school, higher level learning, philosophy. And then Neptune is kind of, or Pisces is kind of the energy of like dreaminess and expansion in our mind, expansion spiritually, expansion where we're thinking on something and maybe turning an idea over in our head and then we come to some kind of revelation. But either way, I think the unifying factor is kind of this knowledge and this mental kind of clarity and um, and vision that we get on something. And so I feel like for some of you guys, this is about maybe even leaving certain situations behind and broadening your horizons and being amazed at how good life can be or how amazing life can treat you. Like maybe you have been dealing with a difficult family or a toxic situation of something that you've been kind of stuck in and it's like spirit saying like okay we're gonna we're gonna really show you something new we're gonna show you a new part of life um and you're gonna learn so much from it and i feel like you're gonna be shocked by how good things can be and how amazing life is and that it doesn't need you don't need to be staying in this energy of like sadness and pain and if something's not working for you sagittarius is definitely that energy that they'll be like sayonara i'm leaving um if you aren't doing what they want you know if they're not happy with it like all fire signs if they're not happy they're out and i love that about them you know and so i feel like for you guys maybe this is also energy about being a little more selfish what's coming to my mind with that because pisces can be very giving and that's something a lot of pisces need to learn is how to put up boundaries and not just give 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 to others same with virgo on that same axis and with sagittarius i think you know it's about really thinking about what do i like what do i want and kind of not being afraid to step into that so let me get some final cards some final messages for pile one what messages do you have for pile one spirit what do you want pile one to know the how is in the now and that's what i love is like that's kind of a really perfect and short way of what i was trying to say which I think so much of the time when we're going through pain, we want to run from that moment. We want to run from whatever's happening, even something small like tension about like, oh, I need to call this person back or something we're procrastinating. We run from it. We just end up like sprinting away when the reality is, is that the solution is always going to be buckling down and just facing it, whatever it is. And like, it's like when you procrastinate, most of the time when you figure out whatever you were procrastinating on, it's like, oh, this was the easiest thing in the world. Like this is so easy. And I cannot believe I was putting this off. Like it literally took me two seconds. Um, and yet we run from it. And I think the same is true for our emotions. A lot of times we have a negative emotion. And so we'll distract ourselves by doing a million other things. But the 
how, the solution is to be in the present. The how is in the now. So staying in the moment, not running, but staying. And it's funny because it's almost like if you just face it, if you just look at it, 90% of the time you're like, this is so not bad at all. Like I, this is such a relief. And also for some of you guys, maybe this is taking spiritual baths because I always find when I take spiritual baths and it's been a while, um, since I actually, you know, took a spiritual bath, I find that when I get in the water, at first it's kind of unpleasant. Like at first I'll be like, oh, why am I doing this? Like the water's too hot or like, oh, I think, you know, maybe I added too many essential oils and like it smells too um, fragrant of the oils, you know, and, or like I'll find stupid excuses like, oh, I, you know what? I forgot this. I should go do that before I get in the bath. And it's, it's so funny because spirit, it's kind of like I have this urge to run out of the bath, you know? Um, and I find that whenever I force myself to sit in the water for a little while, it could be 10 minutes, 15, sometimes it's like 30 minutes if there's a lot that needs to be purged. The energies are being purged by the water. And so eventually I'm like, oh, and whatever I was feeling starts dissipating. And then I realize like, oh, I love being in this water. And I think sometimes when we have... And then sometimes, you know, I'll spend a couple hours in the bath just chilling. You know, I am a Pisces, so I love the water and um, it's so nice. But at first, that feeling of having it purging out, that feeling of it's it's funny because all your traumas or all your negative feelings kind of rise to the surface when you first get in that spiritual bath. Um, and it's, it's only through sitting with it. It's only through letting it go and getting rid of it that it, it, it clears and suddenly you feel so amazing. And then you're able to be present and kind of take in like, oh, this amazing bath that I made and the candles I lit and the smell of the oils. And I put some flower petals in the water and stuff. So the, you know, that's beautiful and all these things and the way your body feels in the water. And I think so it's, it's through that kind of attempt we have to run that we cause ourselves more pain and we take ourselves out of the moment. So like I said, even if you're trying to like eat something to make yourself feel better, you can barely taste it because you're not even able to focus because this kind of stress or problems are niggling away at the back of your mind. And it's really important to just release it, face it, release it, and then you can kind of be present and then you can kind of be in the because I think like when we actually take the time to take in our world, we live in such an incredibly beautiful world, every part of it, every part of earth. Like I'm just always amazed whenever I see footage from different countries, like that I might not be as familiar with, but I'm like, wow, the natural landscape is always so beautiful in different ways, whether it's like the desert, the jungle, the beach, the mountains, it's all so good. And like, you know, we're, we were created to live on this beautiful place and to have beautiful food and to have a beautiful life. And so much, so many of us, we run through life, not even able to take it in because of the stress and the issues and the trauma and the, all this stuff that kind of piles on us. So I think one of the goals for you guys is about processing things in the moment, allowing things to clear. And then I think you guys will be blown away by how much better everything tastes, how much happier you are, and that you do deserve this amazing life. I want to get one final card for Pile 1, Spirit. Your true tribe can't show up until you do. So I do think also you guys might, you know, you might be surprised that as you become more into this empowered energy of knowing you deserve the best and knowing that you deserve to be treated well and knowing that you know, you are this beautiful, special little star, um, then I think maybe you guys will be surprised by how many people just gravitate towards you and realizing that you don't have to put up with anything in a relationship that's that you don't want or that is bad or someone being disrespectful. You don't have to put up with any of it. And I want to get one final card from this deck as well because Spirit keeps telling me to. So what's the message from this deck for Pilot One? Surrendering your to the journey, release control, healing energy flows through you. We've got one more to even it out. Ascending the mountain, keep going forward. So I feel like a lot of you guys, the next part of your journey is going to be really amazing. Spirit has seen all the work you guys have been doing and they know how hard you guys have worked and I think you're going to keep moving forward, but I think you're going to be surprised that 
when you don't try to control it as much or when you just kind of give in to the beautiful energy of the universe and just, again, accept that beautiful things flow to you easily, then I think you're going to be surprised by how great things are and how good things can be and how beautiful life is. I think spirit is going to surprise you guys. And maybe if you've been feeling called to do something a little outside your comfort zone, a little like, I don't know about that, that's scary, then that's maybe something you should definitely go for. But you guys are definitely in a healing energy and know that that's what's happening at this time. It's almost like you're in a winter solstice type energy, even though we're in the middle of July. Um, you know, I'm thinking of like how a Hallmark channel always does like Christmas in July. And that's kind of like what's happening to you guys, energetically speaking. It feels like you're in a little bit of like winter solstice, energetic reprogramming, um, hibernation mode. And I like that for you guys. And I think that you're going to come out of this so much better and stronger and happier and claiming that bliss and beautiful life that you guys deserve. So I really hope that helped. Pile one, let me know if it did in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Um, also, make sure to give this reading a thumbs up, hit the like button, and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on so you find out as soon as I post. And if you guys want to join me over on Patreon, I post my additional readings over there. I just posted one all about what feminine archetype you embody. So it's a great one to tap into your divine feminine energy and really channel the goddess inside. So check that out. Link in my description if you want to join us over there. But I am sending you guys so much love and light and I will see you guys in the next reading. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you then. Bye. Hey, pile two. So we're doing things a little bit differently today, and we're going to start off with some oracle cards and then get into the tarot later. So you guys got commitment, listening, and field of dreams. So what I'm getting with these combination of cards is that some of you guys have been told about something that you really want, something that spirit has placed in your heart, some kind of a goal, some kind of some something you have in mind that you really want to happen. And spirit is asking how committed you are to this. I feel like spirit has been giving you guys guidance on this and spirit wants you to know that you guys can achieve whatever this is that Whatever it is, it is an option. If you've been doubting it or if you've been feeling like, I don't know if that's possible for me, Spirit wants you to know that it is entirely possible and Field of Dreams is a card all about that, that you can make whatever you want happen. You can make your dreams happen. There is kind of this verdant field and the seeds are ready to be planted. But I do feel like with commitment, it's kind of like, how committed are you to this? So maybe some of you guys have been being tested lately. Maybe you've gone through a period that has seemed a little hard or you were hoping that it would happen faster than it has sometimes when we do have those dreams like they're usually about it happening super easily it's not so much we dream about like the struggle and like having to budget and not having enough money and like having to fight because we kind of dream about the end results but that struggle the fight is that integral part of reaching the dream so as much as we might want to just fast forward to the end um, and as difficult as it can be when we're kind of struggling with something we have to understand that that struggle is part of it that struggle is a good sign that we're on the right path and so I feel like spirit has been giving you guys guidance and coming through in your dreams a lot lately I feel like a lot of you guys in this pile have had really vivid dreams lately and spirit is kind of confirming for you that you're on that path that some of you guys need to hear that like yes this is part of it and you're going to reach whatever you want um and i feel like it's almost like spirit is kind of testing you or spirit is kind of seeing how much you want it how much do you really want this how much are you willing to take how much how strong are you going to be about this and so i do feel like even though you guys might some of you guys might have been being tested lately um there is a breakthrough that's going to happen for you guys it is about like persevering and proving that you do really have the commitment level to this for some of you guys that commitment card can be about a relationship and can be about um 
finding a soulmate or a partner so that if that's something you guys really want that could be in the future it could also be like friendships relationships this might be a call for those of you guys in pile two that maybe relationships are an important part of your life and maybe even though you're on this personal quest to achieve something you know there's so much benefit we can get from close relationships, from being around people, from having that kind of fellowship and exchanging energy with someone else. So I do feel like if you guys have been feeling called in the direction of broadening your relationships or wishing or feeling lonely or feeling like, oh, I wish I had more friends or a boyfriend or whatever it may be, I feel like, you know, it's always up to us to make those steps to make that happen. Um, and spirit will like, do the work for us but we have to like kind of meet spirit halfway so it's like if you do want friends but you're not really leaving the house or you do want a relationship but you're never really acting flirty never putting out a flirty energy then like it might not happen you know when we take those steps to actively seek that out and put ourselves out there and sometimes it's a fear of rejection people might have like i don't want to be rejected in that way i don't want to be turned down then um we have to kind of move past that. We kind of have to move through that in order to get what we want. And so I think the theme for this pile is like whatever you want, whether it's some kind of a career goal or a relationship, there's always going to be those difficult parts where we have to be really brave, where we have to put ourselves out there and risk rejection and feel like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. This is really hard and I want to quit. This sucks. But if we just persevere, if we just keep pushing through, if we just keep our eyes on the prize and try to remember why we're doing this, then there's we are going to reach whatever we want. It's just a matter of staying present in that moment. What's coming to my mind is it's kind of like that moment where like maybe you cooked some brownies and you mixed it all up, you cracked all the eggs, mixed it together, um, maybe added chocolate chips or walnuts or something if you wanted to make it extra good. Um, and it's you put it in the oven and you know it's cooking, but you have to have that patience for like, you know, the 40 minutes that it takes to bake or whatever the time is. And you wouldn't like say to yourself like, oh my God, I'm never gonna have those brownies. They must have disappeared in the oven. They must have fallen into like a wormhole in the oven and I'm never going to get them um, because you know that even though you don't have the brownies now and they're not in front of you and you can't see them anymore, you're not mixing them anymore, um, they are going to come out because you put all the ingredients in and you know you did it and you have to have that remembrance of like, I am going to get the brownies, the house smells like brownie batter, and I'm going to get them. And I feel like for some of you guys, you have done the work and now you're just kind of in a waiting period, waiting to see what's going to happen or am I going to get what I want or how is this going to happen? Like it, maybe some of you guys ha even have a hard time believing that it's possible. And I do feel like spirit wants you to know that it is possible and that, you know, we get the things in our life. It's just like, it's just like, making those brownies you know when you put the brownies in the oven that it's not going to suddenly come out as like peach pie or it's not going to suddenly come out as like a bowl of popcorn or a pasta dish like we put all the ingredients in we know it's going to turn into brownies and that's kind of like life with manifestations if we just keep working towards something if we just keep pushing ourselves we are going to get that but we have to have that patience and that mental kind of self-control to be like calm about it um let me spin the astro dice and see what else spirit wants to say but i feel like your guides are really encouraging you guys right now and really happy that kind of i had to block that from falling off okay wow so we got the 10th house neptune and sagittarius so 10th house is a career house and i do feel like for a lot of you guys this is a message about career neptune is an energy about dreams about the subconscious about um the connection to the divine and to spirit and i do feel like a lot of you guys have been very psychic lately getting a lot of deep downloads getting a lot of very intense dreams and visions and i do feel like you should know that that is from your guides that is from spirit and i think also 10th house what's coming to my mind is it is a house of honors and respect and kind of public um, recognition so maybe some of you guys have that on the way maybe some of you guys 
are going to get some kind of recognition in the public sphere of some kind. And 10th house is also ruled by Saturn. So it's interesting that the house of recognition and career and kind of blessings in that sense is ruled by Saturn, kind of a planet of hardship. So, you know, like I was saying, I feel like sometimes the blessing, the career we want, whatever, it's inextricably linked with hardship. It's just directly intertwined. Like you can't pull it apart. They're, they're linked. And I feel like sometimes though, you know, we like to hear the stories of just someone who has something overnight just falls into their lap. But we know that like most of the time, lottery winners tend to like lose their earnings, you know, and, um, and people who actually earn their money, they end up keeping it, you know, because there's something about that struggle. There's something that we gain that we can't get when we just have it happen in a Jupiter energy, which rules Sagittarius, um, and just have it fall into our lap overnight. So I do feel like a lot of you guys, and I just heard some of you guys are going to have an instant breakthrough though. Like, even though you have been working hard and it's been difficult and you've had to persevere, you're going to have some moment of huge blessing that comes from nowhere. And that could be where this Sagittarius energy comes up because it rule, it's ruled by Jupiter. And that's the planet of magical blessings that come out of nowhere. Um, and so a lot of wealth that a lot of times is going to be a surprise or a relationship, but something that's a surprise and just kind of given to us by the universe, just kind of happily and easily falling into our lap. Sagittarius can also relate to travel and higher education. So maybe some of you guys are thinking of traveling, moving a, a long distance, or going into some kind of higher education or furthering your education, getting another degree or something. And I feel like if that's the case, um, and you've been feeling nudged to that, because I really do feel like a lot of you guys in this pile, you've had dreams, and I feel like you guys should be paying attention to those because they are really sending you really strong messages. So if you have felt an urge or a pull towards that in your dreams, I definitely feel like that can be a confirmation for you guys that that's what you should do. Um, yeah, because I feel like with Neptune, like your guides are very much around you at this point. Your guides are, are very, very close to you guys. So let me get some tarot for pile two. Spirit, can you give us some tarot guidance for pile two? What does pile two need to know with the tarot? So we got the Five of Swords. Okay, so the Five of Swords can be a difficult card talking about losses, sometimes being backstabbed, that kind of a thing. We got the Queen of Cups. And we got the Knight of Wands reversed. Um, so with the Five of Swords, that can be a a card of being backstabbed, being treated badly, having people be shady to us, having just a loss. I can talk about a situation in which there's really not kind of a chance for us to win. Like it's just kind of not going to work out well for us. And so with the Knight of Wands coming through reversed, I feel like there's a message for you guys that in certain situations, it's not worth kind of getting upset about them, getting brought up in them, getting distracted by them. It's not worth going into conflict about something or getting mad. It's about kind of returning to our calmness, returning to our Queen of Cups energy, and trying to keep ourselves kind of emotionally regulated and in a positive place emotionally. And I think for a lot of you guys, if you do have this vision with the field of dreams, if you do have something that you're really working towards, um, that can be something that really helps us to remind ourselves of like really what matters because we can get so caught up in the minutia of like daily life and like those small irritations, the annoying little things that happen, the person who cuts us off in traffic or the rudeness of some random like cashier somewhere or, um, or a customer who's rude or a like thing that just doesn't work out right for us, a random like appliance breaking or, you know, 
those kinds of things. But I feel like that's one of the benefits of having a dream or having something we're really working towards is we can keep that at the forefront of our mind and block out all the rest, block out the hardship, block out the difficulty, block out the nastiness that someone might try to direct at us. And so I feel like for you guys, and also I think there's a message for some of you with the Knight of Wands where if you guys are working towards something, not to kind of burn your energy out because the Knight of Wands can be very excitable and super energetic, that's for sure. But sometimes it, if we are feeling like, sometimes, like I said, I feel like there can be impatience with a, wanting to accomplish a certain goal, wanting it to happen now, immediately, right this moment. When sometimes it's better to just kind of pull back a little bit and be like, okay, this is happening on God's timeline, and that's okay. And the timing of God is going to be better than the timing that we want for ourselves. And so, even though I think it can be really frustrating in the moment when we're kind of in a rush or we want something to happen right now, um, a lot of times the best things kind of take time. Speaking of that brownie metaphor, I made earlier I know I've definitely pulled the brownies out of the oven too early and been like whatever like they're pretty much cooked and you know they're a little gooey still but it's fine and like they're good you know but it's sometimes you're like oh this is a little I probably should have left this in a little bit longer if you want that perfect texture for any baked good you have to have the patience to let it fully cook you can't take out a cake when it's like halfway done and then stick it back in because like it literally because of like the chemical stuff in the baking soda and the uh other ingredients like the gluten in the uh, flour and stuff it won't rise correctly if you take it out um, and that's a lesson I learned you know by doing that mistake myself because you get impatient and you're like oh my gosh it's it should be ready by now um, and so I think so many things in life like when you want that perfect item when you want it to be made perfectly and just the perfect texture and so good you gotta give it that full time to cook to bake and so I think the more we can kind of keep ourselves in a place of calmness keep ourselves in a high vibrational energy in the meantime give ourselves that patience and that understanding I think the better off we are because I do feel like a lot of you guys in this pile you're on track for achieving something really amazing and I just think it's like why even waste your time with getting caught up in small things or with being impatient if you knew it was going to happen for you no matter what you'd sit back and enjoy the ride. I've mentioned this before, but I love my grandmother and she's kind of this feisty Southern lady. And she grew up in like the deep South and she would always say to me whenever I was complaining to her about like this person's being mean to me in school or whatever, she would tell me, consider the source, which is kind of a really, like I think it's such a funny kind of Southern it's like one of those bless your heart phrases where it doesn't sound that rude, but when you think about it, it kind of is like really cutting. And basically she was saying like, consider what their life looks like. Like so much of the time, you know, we get caught up in what someone says and maybe they're not even living the kind of life we would want to live. Maybe they're not the kind of person we even respect, but we get caught up in like, they said this about me or they're doing this. And it's like, who cares? And they're not necessarily even worth your time. You should think of your time as more valuable than that. You know what I mean? Not to sound like a snob or something, but to be like, I'm valuable. My time is valuable. I'm pursuing this dream and I'm not going to let this person get under my skin. I'm not going to let them get in my head. Maybe that's what they want and I'm not going to give them that energy from me. And another metaphor that's coming to my mind is if you were on a road trip, like say you were going across the country from the East Coast to California, maybe from Pennsylvania to California, and you had to drive through the middle of the country, you wouldn't freak out because you were in Kansas and because you were surrounded by kind of flat grassland. You wouldn't be like, oh my God, this is supposed to be California. It's supposed to be the desert. I can't believe I'm here. I'm never going to get there. Oh my God, it, it's, it's green and flat around me. I know this is Kansas and so I'm never going to make it. You would be like, okay, this is part of the journey. I started on the East Coast, which was very different and at this time of year, very green and overgrown and with a lot of tall trees. Now I've seen the kind of geography changing. I know I'm in Kansas. Things look a little bit flatter now and there's a lot of grass and it's very open. 
Um, so I can see that I'm on this trajectory. I can see that I've gone from here, I'm here, and I'm going to end up here. And you would know that just because you're not in California now, that you're making that progress. And I feel like so many of us, though, in the moment, we're on this road trip with something. We're on this, we're heading towards some kind of a destination, but we get so impatient and we start talking to ourselves really negatively. Like, I'm never going to achieve it. I'm never going to get there. I'm stuck where I am. Um, this is all it's ever going to be. And it's so silly. Like, it's, it's like, that's just not how life works. And I bet if we could really think deeply and look back and look at ourselves from wherever we started and look to where we are now, we could see so much forward momentum and we could see so much change that we've made. We can kind of see that when we're on like a map or when we're driving and we can pan out of our Google Maps and be like, oh, okay, sweet. So I'm halfway across my trip and I have half more. And yeah, I'm pretty far from California right now, but I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and I'm going to end up there. Um, but instead, we just get so mired in. And I think that's where a lot of people end up quitting or being like, this isn't going to work. Or if you just had the persistence and the tenacity and the commitment to it, then I feel like everything, you would get exactly what you wanted. But a lot of the work we do is in keeping ourselves emotionally regulated in the meantime, and not let not letting these things get the best of us, not letting ourselves get upset, or focused on like the tiny little details, the tiny little annoyances of life, because those things are always going to happen. It's just the nature of the world. It's like things are going to go wrong, things are going to be annoying. And partially, we have to have the self control to like, see past that. And I think in a lot of different situations, it's kind of seeing like, what can I change about this? What power do I have? Like I can't control anyone else, but I can control me. I can control how much energy I give it. I can control how much I react to it. I can control how I see the situation. Maybe instead of me freaking out about like the rude cashier and being like, she was so hateful towards me. She was so mean to me for no reason. She deserved blah, blah, blah. I can be like, wow, she must've been having a bar bad day. And geez, that's, that's really hard. And, you know, uh, whatever she's going through, I wish her the best. And yeah, and just leave it at that and keep on with my day. And I'm going to stay in a positive mood. And honestly, like I said, like the thing of karma, that's up to God and God does keep score of everything. So if she's truly being a mean, hateful person and is just that way in general, she will have karma to pay for it. Um, so it's not up for me to even try to figure out. It's not even up to me to try to be like, was she doing that to hate on me? Was she having a rough day? Was she in a bad mood? Was she, did she get in a fight with her boyfriend or is she just evil? Does she not like me just because she doesn't like the look of me? Was she blah, blah, like, you know what I mean? All those things are a waste of my energy when all I can focus on is like, I'm going to, I'm going to positive vibe. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to focus on my goals and what I need to do and not get caught up in what someone else's feelings towards things. Because I also think sometimes when you're on a journey, I feel like some of you guys might have, I don't know, I'm seeing some hateful coworkers or something. Um, sometimes I feel like when we're on a journey or we have a really great goal in mind, for some reason, it kind of rubs people the wrong way. Sometimes it's because they had goals and dreams of their own, but they kind of abandoned them at some point because they didn't think it was possible. And when they see us pursuing those things, it's almost like they get offended because they're like, they take our pursuing that as like, some condemnation of them or like point like we're kind of scolding them like you didn't try or they they don't want to deal with that inner shame they have that they gave up on maybe something god put in their heart maybe their mission uh, because we do have a choice in life whether we kind of achieve some of our life missions or not and not everyone does so um I think it's really important for us to try to do what we came to this earth to do and to live a life that you know um might be a little more difficult because of that because it's kind of easier to stay in our comfort zone and just uh not not step outside of it just to kind of stay you know in like a smaller space not putting ourselves out there whatever that might mean for you um maybe staying at a job that we know isn't really serving us or isn't really doing our life mission or it could be really staying inside and never leaving our comfort zone and never putting ourselves out there but 
either way, I think it's so important to figure out why we're put on this planet and to try to serve that. And you don't have to know the whole story. You don't have to know every part of it, but you could most of the time have a glimpse of like, I know I'm really good at this, or I, I know I feel good when I help people with that, or I know that I have a natural talent for this. And a lot of people maybe could use that in some way. But I, I do think that um, it's really important for us to pay attention. And if you're not sure of what it is, you can always ask spirit to get those nudges and to see what spirit has to say about like what your purpose is. And spirit will provide you with some of those urges and stuff. And you can always book a private reading with me <laughs> if you want some life guidance. Um, link in my description for that, of course. But let me get some additional cards um, for pile two. What messages do we have for Pile 2 Spirit? This one says, it's all in divine order. Allow. Nothing real can be threatened. Oh my God. And I was just watching the all night video by Beyonce last night. I love that video. Um, and so that's so funny because I was like, why am I watching this? Like, I, I love that video, but I haven't watched it in a while. Um, so, and that's the line from all night. Nothing real can be threatened. And I think that that's really true. Like when I think of, relationships that have worked out or um, life things that have worked out careers whatever there it's like I can think of all the things that didn't work out and it's almost like I energetically knew they wouldn't and so I would panic I would stress about it like I would be like does this person really like me I don't know do they like I got I don't know maybe I'm I'm afraid to like embarrass myself in front of them maybe they'll think it's lame if I do this and the relationships, friendships that have always worked out with people, it's like I could have done anything. I could have like done a handstand and like jumped around like a clown and they would have still wanted to be friends with me or still wanted to date me, I think, you know. I mean, maybe not, but I think so. That was the vibe I felt was I always felt comfortable. I always felt like I could be my most true, honest, authentic self. And I think that's why we should just align ourselves with our most authentic self the earlier we can. And then we can attract the right people because what it, whether it's a career, whether it's a um, love interest or a friendship or whatever, I think that Obviously, all those things are going to take some level of work. We, we can't just like be completely lazy with things and compromise in relationships or, you know, working hard in a career where maybe you feel like taking the day off, but you got to show up. That's normal. But I mean, when you're stressing about like, I don't know if this person likes me. I don't know if this is for me. I feel really bad at this job. Everything it just seems like it's out of alignment and we're panicked all the time about it, then that can be an indication that it's not for us anyway. And the more we show up as our authentic self and our best version of ourself, our most honest version of ourself, the quicker we can find that kind of right match. Like, you know, when you fit a puzzle piece and you don't try to ram a puzzle piece into the wrong section of the puzzle just to make it fit. Like that would ruin the whole puzzle. It wouldn't even work. You have to find each piece and how it fits in. And so I feel like, for a lot of you guys, as long as you're showing up authentically with what truly speaks to your heart, you should know that this is going to be a success. You are going to get what you want, but it is important that we do the work to make sure we're being authentic, to make sure like this resonates deeply with me. This feels really good to me. I love this and I feel aligned with it and I know this is right for me. That's, I think, how we get into the best energy for ourselves. And then I feel like once we do that, we have to allow for divine timing and allow for the divine order of things and not fight against it, but kind of allow allowing ourselves to be carried away by the flow of life, on the currents of life, as this says. How can you relax into the flow and go with the current of life? And I think that's so true. Like anyone who's tried to paddle upstream against the current knows how hard it is and knows how easy it is when we just, you can literally just float when you're going with the current. And so sometimes I feel Again, there's resistance or there's a feeling of wanting to rush something or there's a feeling of like, I want to control this situation. But I think the best way to like manifest something and make it happen is to do the work that we need to do, but then kind of relax and leave it to God and just kind of do our end and then let spirit take over. So not trying to like micromanage how it happens or the small interactions or I can't believe I had to deal with this person. They're so annoying or I can't believe I have to do this or why am I being put through this situation? Like, okay, I'm being put through this situation. Kind of like if you're on a boat and it goes through some rapids, you just have to like kind of 
let go and let God and just kind of hold on and just chill. You, you know, there's not going to be any benefit to you just like flipping out and losing it. So I think so much of the time we try to speed things up or we focus on the annoying stuff, the tiny things that get under our skin, when the reality is we should be like allowing spirit to take us off kind of like a kite goes with the wind and just flies easily. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I hope that's making sense. And I want to pull some cards from this deck and get some final cards for pile two from this deck. Begin now. Take your first step. Fogged in. Go slowly. Take time. Wow. So that's that makes a lot of sense because that's what I'm getting with the divine timing thing for you guys. Like I really do feel like there is an aspect of divine timing and things just maybe taking a little bit longer than you wanted but being so much more positive as a result and happening in exactly the right time and this one flew off and i just managed to grab it off the floor and it says unknown territory you are exactly where you need to be and i love that there's such a message for you guys in pile two of divine timing and trust and understanding that i feel like some of you guys have just got this really strong image of someone standing off stage and like waiting to go on like you know maybe they are watching like a, they're in a play or something and they're watching the other people finish up a scene and their scene is coming next and or they're gonna sing and someone else is singing on stage right now and they're right about to go center stage but they're kind of in the wings and they're maybe in shadow and the spotlight's on someone else but they're right about to walk into it and so i feel like some some of you guys are being prepared for a better stage in your life or something really beautiful and amazing. And wherever you are on this journey, because maybe some of you guys are hesitant about taking that first step or really leaning into it, and maybe some of you guys are well on your way. But either way, I feel like there's a message that you are where you're supposed to be and that when it's for you, it's always going to be for you. I love that phrase. And all Night is such a beautiful song, honestly. And the video is really beautiful. They show all these real couples in love. And it's a great video if you're an empath and you pick up other people's energy because you can just kind of, there's so much love energy in that video. Um, but the, the whole song, Uncut, because they cut it for the video, is so pretty. And she says, nothing real can be threatened. And I think that's really true. Like, I think that what's for you, the things that are in alignment with you, the things that really make your heart sing or the things that really you were put on this earth to achieve that you were destined for you can kind of find some of those by looking at your north node um, in your astrology but it is personal for everyone um, and i think that for all of us our destiny and our specific mission that only we can give only we can have the the little same the little spark of whatever we are inside um, that God has put us on this planet to do, that will never go away. It might like wax and wane and everyone has different missions and someone's mission might be something like raising a family, um, you know, or something that some people might consider small but isn't small at all. Um, but all of us have an important mission. All of us have something valuable to contribute as members of humanity. And so I think, you know, trusting in that, trusting that when we line up with that, we match up with that, that God will take care of us and protect us and take us to exactly where we need to go. I think that's the message for you guys, Pile 2. And so, yeah, you're where you need to be right now. And I think a lot of you guys are going to be really happy with how things turn out in the future and have all the things you guys have been dreaming of and wanting. And you guys should probably keep a dream journal and write down all the things that are coming to you because I really feel like there's a lot of messages in there for you guys to learn from. So... Thank you for letting me tune into your beautiful energy pile too. It was really lovely to read. So make sure to like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know how it resonates in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. And make sure to subscribe, turn notifications on. And if you guys um, want to see more of my readings, you can definitely check out my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about what divine feminine archetype you embody. So it's a really fun one if you want to tap into your feminine goddess, Venus 
this energy. Um, and if you guys, so yeah, Patreon link in description. So check that out. Also, I have additional readings over there if you want to join us. And if you want a private reading with me, like I mentioned, you can also check out the link in my description for briarrosetarot.com and get on one a one-on-one -on -one session if you need more clarity about this subject or your life mission or whatever, because there's all different kinds of things we can cover, obviously, in a private reading. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sending you so much love and light, and I'll be back very soon for another reading. So take care, and I'll see you then. Bye. Hey, pile three. So we're doing today's reading a little bit differently today. We're going to start off with some oracle cards, and then we'll get into the tarot later. But you guys got Golden Palace, Stormfields, and Moonlight. So these are cards that can talk about you guys going through a hard time right now and maybe some conflict or just difficulty, but that things are going to work out in the end and you guys are going to be having a lot of abundance and wealth and blessings coming in and also that you guys are very psychic and very attuned to spirit lately you might have been getting some really deep downloads with this past capricorn full moon so some of you guys might have capricorn placements or earth sign placements like taurus and virgo but you guys are definitely very psychic lately and i do feel like you are increasing your psychic abilities growing with your psychic powers and so if that's something you guys are working on or just getting into whatever the case may be that part of your life and your abilities in that regard is really growing so pay attention to the downloads and the messages that you guys are getting at this time maybe some of you guys did some full moon rituals or manifestations or something like that but there is a strong connection to the moon for you guys I do feel like with Stormfields and Golden Palace that this is a message that a lot of you guys are going through it right now. You have been going through trouble or hardship or difficulty and to know that you guys in this pile are specifically manifesting abundance and some really amazing things that you have only dreamed of and wished for. So I think you guys need to know that it's all going to be okay in that regard and that the struggle you're going through now is going to be totally worth it in the end when you get this big payoff. For a lot of you guys, you're going to be living in a very beautiful place. I'm seeing a very beautiful living situation in particular. Maybe some of you guys don't like your living situation or this might even be far off in the future, but I feel like either way, sooner or later, you guys are going to end up in a very beautiful living situation. And you guys are going to see this pay off and you're going to have something about people having to see you um, have these blessings. So some kind of public recognition. I am hearing the line from Psalm 23, he prepareth me a table in the presence of mine enemies. So in front of your enemies, I don't know why, but that's something spirit seems to really like is to make sure that the people who came against you have to witness it. Um, so yeah, there's some kind of pettiness going on maybe with your spirit guides where they're like, you know, you guys have to watch. So I feel like you guys are being prepared for this and it is going to pay off. I didn't do this with any of the other piles, but they're telling me to get one more card from this. So spirit, what is this other card? Magical map shifter. Okay, so that is a card about being able to kind of shift your your identity in some ways and changing and that's that's what's coming up for me with that is a lot of you guys might really have changed who you were and there might be people around you who don't like that maybe some of you guys have had family that's thought you were a certain way or friends that thought you were a certain way and might even look or think of an old version of you like they knew you way back when and maybe you've done a lot of work and grown a lot and become a lot more empowered and maybe those people wouldn't be okay with that or they would be jealous or salty or they might make comments to undermine your confidence in that and try to make you doubt yourself or try to make you feel like oh I'm still that like shy insecure sixth grader that I was or I'm still that shy insecure like kid going off on their first job out of college and really nervous when it feels like you guys have grown so much and you're so much more empowered. And I, I just feel like spirit just wants to kind of pause and take a moment to acknowledge how much growth you guys have done. And like, I literally want to give you guys a little round of applause and just say like, 
Wow, you deserve so much credit for everything you guys have changed because I do feel like a lot of you guys, I'm seeing that you guys were going through it. Like you were, you have not had an easy life and maybe this is what the Stormfields card is about. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Now it's kind of clicking more into place. So maybe you guys, this is like your past energy might still still have some residual energy. And it's interesting, I brought up the full moon in Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. Now they're bringing up Saturn to me. And I often, I mean, Saturn is um, an indicator in someone's birth chart when they have a prominent Saturn or a lot of Capricorn, that they might face a lot of difficulty early on. And then that kind of clears out a lot of times kind of through this through the Saturn return. Um, so I feel like for a lot of you guys, maybe you had a really difficult upbringing or a really difficult early life, or maybe you had a really hard time at school and were like bullied or teased or something. And there's something about spirit wanting these people to witness because it's like they did wrong. And what they did, how they treated you was wrong. And so now they have to see you getting all these blessings and abundance. And if it hasn't happened yet, it will. And spirit is really like wanting to give you the credit, wanting to kind of gas you up and make you realize how amazing it was that you guys overcame this. Like I feel like some of you guys don't realize that truly you were so stuck. Like that situation was so difficult and horrible and you were just so like forced to deal with a lot of negativity that I think was way beyond your years that almost like adults would have a hard time with. And you at your age, it was like overwhelming how much you guys had to deal with. And yet I just heard and still I rise. Wow, what a powerful line and, and poem. So I feel like a lot of you guys, you've really overcome this. You've had so much thrown at you. And I'm also hearing, um, which is a little different vibe, but um, Cardi B, Get Up 10. I love that song. And, you know, she always sa she says in the song, knock me down nine times, but I get up 10. And I feel like that's you guys. Like, you have been knocked down. People have tried to take you out. And I kind of love that song because she's talking about, like, kind of the record executives being shocked when she walked into a room and, like, all the people who doubted me are going to see this. And I just got chills as I'm saying that. And like, she's really gloating in the song. And I love it because it's like, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people did doubt her for, for a variety of reasons. And then imagine that they have to witness her becoming this huge star, whether you're a fan of her or not. Like, I feel like that's pretty cool, you know? And so I feel like a lot of you guys, you're going to be placed on some kind of like validation or some kind of having your reputation restored or these people who tried to lie about you kind of being made a fool of or everyone not even paying attention to them and just paying attention to you some kind of validation of some kind by having blessings so maybe getting some material wealth and abundance or maybe some kind of social recognition or public recognition but I do feel like these people are going to be really mad about it and it's kind of funny I mean I don't mean to laugh but it is kind of funny to me like you know, they were being haters. And I do feel like there's a message that spirits like I saw it all, you know, I, I saw every bit of it. And trust me, I am going to take care of it. And I almost feel like there's a message for some of you guys that some of you because you came from either this family structure or certain friends, some of you guys doubt yourself still or you feel like deep down, you don't deserve it. Like when you get the blessings, there's a part of you that thinks like goes into panic or thinks like, Oh my God, what are these people doing? Why am I having blessings? Or like maybe someone like really cute asks you out. And instead of you being like, mm, of course, of course they would ask me out. You're like, why would they like me? What's going on? This is so weird. What's happening? Like, and your energy is kind of very resistant to it, or you get some influx of money. And instead of being like, heck yeah, I earned this. That's so awesome. I deserve it. You're like, Oh my God, like, what, why are they giving, why, I don't, when are they going to find out I don't deserve this money? And oh my gosh, like, I hope, and, and there's a part of you, I think that deep down, you're afraid you'll be a target if you glow up fully. Maybe some of you guys are even trying to alter your appearance or to do something to feel more confident. And there's a part of you that's like, if I change too much and I achieve all these things I'm trying to achieve and become this person that I want to become, that like I'm scared 
I'm scared of that outcome because in the past when you were younger, it made you a target because I think a lot of this hatred that's always been directed at you guys is because of jealousy. It's because people saw your spark and your beauty and your strength and your beautiful energy inside. And so I think some of you guys still to this day, when the blessings come in, there's a party that's like, oh, I don't know about this. Like, let me just push this away. When the reality is you, you deserve every bit of it and you should be welcoming it in with open arms and your guides, they didn't make a mistake by giving you the blessings. Like some of you guys, if this isn't your energy now, it will be your energy in the future. But for some of you guys, I feel you've already reached the blessings. And for those of you who already are at that stage of this journey, I feel like you sometimes doubt it, second guess it, feel like you don't deserve it. You might get weirdly emotional. I'm seeing someone crying. Like, I don't, why is this happening? To, maybe you like feel guilty in a way. Like maybe you see someone who might not have as much money as you or might not have the kind of blessings you have and, it, and you feel really bad and guilty. You, you know, and like really get in your head about it. And it's like, you need to start questioning why do you think you don't deserve it? Why do you think anyone else deserves it over you? You know, because it, yes, it's good to be giving and empathetic, but what good does it really do to like even cry about someone else not having money? <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess we can have empathy, but it's not going to give them money by crying. Like our tears is not like equate to like a dollar for per tear, you know, or $10 per tear. It's like, it doesn't really change anything. And I also think there's something to be said for like, and I know this, like, I don't want to sound bad, but sometimes people, everyone comes onto this life to like, learn different lessons. You know what I mean? And so in a weird way, sometimes I know for me, I used to make the mistake of really overextending myself to people and with friends and stuff. I'm not talking about huge systemic problems, but with friends and stuff, like there would be a friend who was in a certain toxic behavior and I would continuously help them out in different situations and like, you know, really do a lot for them. And what I noticed is like nothing ever changed, you know, and I'm not saying, by the way, there's no point in charity because there totally is. And it can be one of the most incredible, beautiful things. And there's also so much goodness in giving away. And there's positive energy that comes to us. There's good karma. I'm not saying like, hey, don't give people money at all. But I'm saying that we also have to understand that if spirit has given us something, it's for a reason, right? And and it's important not to get into like this kind of overly, it can sometimes be even overly self-serving kind of guilt energy of like, oh, but I don't deserve it. But this person, it's just like, what is this? What even good does this do for someone else? And again, I know it noticed with my friend who I was always helping out that like same energy, same problem. Like I would help with one problem, another would pop up. And sometimes you've got to let someone go to live their own life and their own make their own decisions. It's not to say you're cold hearted towards them, but it's like you've got to focus on yourself, you know, to a certain extent. And yes, you can help others as well, but there should be an energetic exchange in some place. It shouldn't just be you pouring yourself into someone else. And if that's something, of course, again, it's good to be charitable. It's amazing to go to like a soup kitchen or to help someone or to give money to a worthy cause. That's amazing. And I'm not saying something like that. But when we beat ourselves up, when we're speaking to ourselves in a language of I don't deserve this, or I this person deserves it more than me, or I'm such a loser. Why did why did this happen? Why do I have these blessings? That's not positive. That's not something God wants for us, or that's a high vibrational energy to be in. Um, if we give, we should be giving out of the goodness of our own heart and kindness and wanting the best and a positive mindset, not like giving someone money out of some tortured guilt, weird vibrational energy. You know what I mean? And so I feel like for you guys, you just need to know and give yourself the permission to accept the blessings that have been given to you. And if you're not in that energy yet, I feel like you will be. Um, because it's like you guys, I feel are going to be like, they really want you to know how special you guys are. And this is why maybe some of you guys have led different lives from certain people in your life. I do feel like some of you guys in this pile are over givers or empaths, where you give to a lot of people around you or family or something like that. And it's like, I don't know if you guys have been treated that well in return. And that's what I'm saying is like, it's one thing to give charity to someone who is genuinely grateful and is like, thank you so much. And, um, and there's that kind of, 
like really helping them. That's another thing than giving help to someone who's like repeatedly ungrateful, treats you badly, is really nasty to you. You know what I mean? That's not really like, what? why are you doing that? That just doesn't really make sense. Um, so I feel like for some of you guys, it's like you need to start questioning yourself of like, why don't I feel worthy? And if you're not already getting these blessings yet, you will. I think some of you guys need to put yourselves out there in the world more. Like, I feel like you guys have a very magical energy about you. I can't wait to spin your astro dice to see what comes up, but I don't know. I feel like you might have some psychic placements, maybe a little Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, I guess the water signs. Um, but there's, I, I'm, I feel like there's something very giving and loving. I'm really getting like Pisces type vibes. Um, but there's a lot of magic. You also might have a prominent sun or something or some Leo placements, fifth house placements. But I just feel like you guys are a little bit of a star. There's something very magical. Yeah, very Leo, where you guys are supposed to kind of make these ripples and be the center of attention and have a lot of people drawn to you. And I feel like in a weird way, you feel guilty when that happens instead of embracing it. When you have blessings showered upon you, you don't think like, oh my God, this is awesome. You think like, wait, what's going on? What, when, wait, what did I do? And there's a lot of things that kind of need to be unpacked with that. Like, why do you think you deserve less? Why do some of you guys tolerate bad behavior in relationships? Why do you guys not think that you deserve more, that you deserve the best? Like, I feel like you guys are that person that you would give the shirt off your back to anyone. But at the same time, you you are in relationships with people that keep taking your shirt and like never give it back and never give you anything. And at a certain point, you're going to run out of shirts and you kind of have to think about like, okay, yes, I want to give and yes, I want to be kind and yes, I want to help others. But how can I even give if like my energy is totally depleted or I've given myself so many times to people and they don't really care. They don't really notice. So I think a lot of you guys are being called to make a little bit of an energetic shift with this and to kind of change your opinion of yourself and realizing that you deserve it all. You deserve kindness and love and respect and relationships. And if some of you guys, I feel you're not comfortable in relationships unless you're over giving either energetically or literally with money, but it might just be energetic. Like if you, like someone does something nice for you or is like, Hey, you look great. And you feel like you have to be like, Oh my God, you look amazing. You're the best blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of like, Whoa, what's even the problem? And you guys might give off an energetically where an energy where you're energetically blocking this abundance energy that wants to come in for you because you're kind of telling spirit like no i got this because you have this very like self-sufficient energy um of like you're not really good at receiving you're not really good at like allowing it to flow in and i feel like spirit wants to give you so many of these blessings and gifts and bring these people into your life but a lot of you guys are kind of closed off to it so let me get and we channeled these cards for a really long time but let me get um some astro dice now so pile three Oh my God, just, oh my God. Oh my God, literally the two I said, that's crazy. Okay, so we got Pisces and we got Leo. Oh, I just love when the astrodites come through with exactly what I was channeling. So that's always a nice confirmation. Yes, I feel like a lot of you guys in this pile, like I said, have prominent Leo placements or Pisces placements. Um, so yeah, you know, this is kind of a dangerous combination to be honest. Pisces and Leo can mean that you energetically kind of naturally can be the center of attention or have this bright shining energy, which is Leo. Um, but Leo is a fire sign for a reason because fire signs kind of have natural defenses and they, they will check someone quick and Pisces really won't. Pisces is kind of the fish and it kind of drifts around and it gives. It's also a very martyr energy. So sometimes it can mean someone that has these beautiful blessings and is the star and is the center of attention, but feels a lot of guilt about it. 12th house can be the house of undoing. And there can literally be people who sabotage themselves because they refuse to own this energy. They refuse to own their power. They refuse to own the fact that like, I am a star. I am this Leo. I am this sun energy. I do have these gifts given to me by spirit and God. And that's for me. It's not for me to just give to everyone. And that's something a lot of Pisces needs to learn is to put up a little bit of walls. You don't have to like cut everyone out, but putting up some boundaries so you can have 
your gifts and realize you are entitled to those things too. You're not just this servant put on the planet to like help everyone else out. You're put on the planet as the main character to be your best life for yourself and your destiny. And again, everyone chooses their lifetimes before they enter, right? So it's like you kind of, of course, there's free will that happens during your lifetime. So not everything you choose, but to a certain extent, like you choose your gifts, you choose all these things. And if you have beautiful gifts that are giving you attention or people are drawn to you, or you just naturally manifest things, that's a gift you chose for your lesson that you need to learn. It might be a reward lifetime. It might be you were of service, which can be Pisces. Um, in past lifetimes, you might have a Pisces South node or something or a Virgo South node, but either way, you are being rewarded now and you need to accept it. It's like, imagine, have you ever given someone a gift and they're just like, oh, no thanks. Like, it's the worst feeling. You're like, can I just, actually, I'll just take it back. I'll just go return it. Like, <laughs> let me just grab that and rewrap it. And because it's like, it's so frustrating when you like, especially if you like put a lot of effort into it, you get all excited. You imagine the look on their face. You're like, what are they going to say? What are they going to think? I know they were talking about this, like, like, all last few months i know they're gonna get so excited and then they unwrap it and they're just like huh oh oh yeah i think i wanted this oh thanks yeah thank you and just put it in the corner like throw it to the corner you're like what the heck was that because the whole point of it was for them to get excited have that look of like oh, i'm so happy oh my god this is exactly what i wanted thank you yay and be like jumping up and down with joy and be clutching that gift and being like it's mine yes this is what i wanted thank you and you probably wouldn't feel good either if they were like oh thanks this is great but then they just gave it to someone else you know so it's like that's how spirit feels sometimes when the spirit's showering us with gifts and blessings and we just keep giving it to someone else so i feel like for a lot of you guys you need to claim these blessings you need to open them up and you've, if you've had this sector of your life back blocked i would definitely guess that that would have a huge part to play. And what's also coming up to me is Leo is the fifth house. Fifth house is the house of interests, kind of hobbies, creative outlets. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, there is an energy where some of you guys might be feeling called to like post about a hobby or like have some kind of uh, gift that you have and share it or something like that. Not everyone, but for some of you guys, there's something about being called to that you're very gifted. You're very gifted at something. And you, it's something I feel like has always been an interest of yours, something you guys have always been into, but you're like, oh, I, yeah, but like, yeah, I like, I like knitting, but like, who cares and whatever. Or, and I feel like that's something that honestly, there's something about it being shared or something you're really good at with it that there's something there to be shared with the world. So yeah, let me get some tarot cards for pile three. Spirit, can you give us some tarot cards? Okay, that one flew out. We got the three of pentacles. Oh my God, that's so funny that the queen of cups came out reversed. We did get that in the last reading, but it was upright and their message was to be more of the queen of cups. And it makes perfect sense that for you guys, it's blocked because I do feel like you guys have been the queen of cups. You've been a little bit too giving, you've been a little bit too kind and benevolent and it's a little over the top. It's like, okay, we need some boundaries. A lot of you guys, I'm just gonna say a lot of you guys are over givers. A lot of you guys just give, 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 give. And it's like, oh my God what are you doing? Is there anything left at the end of the day for you? Do you ever think about like your interests, your wants? I feel like some of you guys are being really nice to people that would never reciprocate or do the same and might even resent you for it. Like they might even actually be mad at you. Like, Ugh, do they think they're better than me? They keep giving me stuff. I don't know, but it's like, I think you might be amazed if you stopped over giving to see who of your friends would stick around and who, what of your relationships would last. Some of you guys need to learn that you are entitled to be around people who are going to 
give back to you. You don't have to have these lopsided relationships. And with the Three of Pentacles, that can be a card about fellowship and about joining up with others. And especially it's kind of like school vibes, like learning vibes. And you know, when you think of in school, everyone's an equal. No one's like, no, like no one's hanging out with the teacher, you know? Everyone is kind of on the same level. Everyone's on the same track. Like everyone's in the same grade, mostly same classes. And like, it's very egalitarian when you think back to school. And I feel like some of you guys, you get into relationships where you're kind of like the mom. And oh my God, as I'm saying that, I just looked over to these and the Pisces thing flipped to cancer. And I was just about to say, I'm getting cancer vibes, which I know I mentioned earlier in the reading. You might have a prominent cancer as well in addition to Pisces but I feel like a lot of you guys have like a mom role that you take on and cancer is the mom of the zodiac which is why I'm mentioning that where like it's not egalitarian friendships or relationships where like everyone is giving everyone's equal and it's all chill it's like you're giving so much you're you're giving over the top you're really helping you're really putting yourself out for others and it's like when did you accept that that was like what you deserve in relationships when did you accept that it was your job to be like Cinderella and everyone else is like just you know I guess the evil step sisters, although I'm not trying to vilify them, but it's just like that shows you that's why that's like a fairy tale is because that's an unfair power imbalance. You know, it's not fair for one person just to be running around against around following someone else. So for a lot of you guys, this is about questioning, like, why do I overgive and really following that to the root of like, was there some kind of trauma in your family? Were you the scapegoat of your family? Were you blamed for things? And now when something bad happens, you automatically think like, it's my fault. I did something bad, you know? Um, or like, were some of you guys just ha scapegoated in, in friend groups? Or was there some kind of situation where you always felt like you had to, or maybe you were parentified by your, by your parents? But I feel like for a lot of you guys, there are situations where somehow you have taken on this role of like, I have to help everyone around me and I'm not, I, I'm okay with not getting it back. And whenever you're in that energetic alignment, you're going to attract takers. You're going to attract kind of predators to a certain extent, even though if they're not trying to do that, they're just confused, they're just in a bad place. It's still really unfair for you to be around that energy. And in a good, fair relationships, it's both sides giving equally. It's both sides being like, this is, you know, this is what I'm giving giving and this is what I'm getting and I feel great and it's fair, you know? Let me get another card for pile three spirit. Can you give us another card for pile three? Let's see. I love when it takes like forever. Nine of wands. Wow. That makes a lot of sense. I feel there's a lot of competitiveness around you guys because you are in this Knight of Pentacles. A lot of people can tell that you have this energy of someone who is going to be very successful and who is going to be manifesting a lot of money. And people are jealous probably. They are jealous because maybe they're on a kind of not the same track maybe they're on a very boring track in life and they're just like looking at you like dang this person's clearly on this trajectory towards massive success and they're going to be accomplishing a lot and like ooh, maybe my life is kind of not that great in comparison um so yeah there there's jealousy surrounding you guys but i feel like I feel like this is where you need to put up the boundaries. There's competitive people around you. And these people are going to be so mad when you reach your big success. Like, actually, your guides are laughing to me. It's just so funny. I'm telling you, like, the spirit guides are so savage. And that's why Psalm 23 says, you know, he prepares me a table in the presence of mine enemies. Like, they don't have to do that. They could have the enemies down the street, around the corner, down the block, across town. But no, they're like, no, you guys are going to have to sit and watch. And so spirit likes to do something with that. I guess just to, you know, just to kind of like send a message to everyone. Like, don't be a nasty little jealous hater because, yeah, those people are the worst. And so I think some of you guys, you have been done wrong done wrong by these people and you're going to have all of them have to witness your success and your blessings. And I really feel like don't even get mad about this. If you're in this current energy and you are surrounded by these haters, like don't even let it get to you because like, yeah, your guides and spirit is going to take care of all of this. Let me get some message cards for pile three. Can we get a message for pile three spirit? What message do you want pile three to know? This one says, 
Gratitude is the life force of peace. Wow, that is perfect for you guys. That's so perfect. And that's what I'm saying is some of you guys, you need to actually check your gratitude because as I'm saying, like, like, like I was saying, the story about someone like not accepting a gift, a lot of people will be like, oh my God, that's so ungrateful. Even if the person is just doing it out of like, I don't know if I'm worthy of this or I don't know if I deserve this, you're still going to be pretty annoyed if like they they just throw your gift on the ground and are like, okay, whatever. You know, even if they're doing it out of like, I don't think I'm good enough, you're still going to be like, okay, but I like worked really hard for that gift and uh, what the heck? Like, why did I buy that for you? Um, and so it really is important for us to work on our gratitude and work on being able to accept and work on being able to receive because spirit isn't going to go to all that work if we're never going to be grateful for it and we're never going to like actually take it in. And so, yeah, like you might, if you have a hard time kind of um, accepting gifts on the basis of like, I know I'm awesome and I'm in my Leo energy and I accept this and I deserve it which I think you should work on that. But if you can't right now, then work on it on the basis of being grateful to spirit. And, and you can kind of motivate yourself that way. Because I do think some of you guys are kind of like guilt-ridden type people. Not guilt-ridden, but like you're the type to really, I don't know, like take on guilt or feel like you're not doing enough or whatever. So tell yourself you're not being grateful enough. If that's what you have to say, then say it that way. And start, I mean, you should never speak negatively about yourself in terms of manifestation like ever. So you guys just probably need to work on this mindset. But I think you can reframe it into like, I'm gonna be so grateful. I'm gonna know I deserve this and I'm gonna know spirit gave it to me for a reason. And I'm gonna focus on being present in that moment of gratitude, not thinking about, do I deserve this? Why did I have this? This person deserves it more. Or maybe that person should get it. No, no, no. I deserve it. I'm so grateful to it. Thank you for this gift. Thank you. Oh my God. I am so happy. This is everything I wanted. I am so grateful. I thank you from the bottom of my heart and all those things. And not feeling less than or like you don't deserve it or like any negativity with that because you do deserve it. And Spirit really wants you guys to get this because they keep saying it to me. Any other messages you want? Pile. For you to know when peace is your priority negativity cannot exist and you are the joy seeker what little victories can you celebrate so this is about you guys really celebrating yourself and allowing yourself to resonate in an energy of joy and happiness and not feeling like um I do feel like some of you guys might have had past traumas coming up lately and that's totally okay and fine and it's such an important part of processing and doing shadow work and coming out the other side um, really positive. But I also feel that a lot of you guys need to focus on like just allowing yourself to be happy because I feel like there were times in your life when like people didn't allow you or want you to be happy. People wanted you to be kind of sad and depressed like them um and i do feel like for a lot of you guys this might have been family because i keep seeing those families from hoarding buried alive and i know i sound crazy because i i actually don't watch this show that much but i've gotten so many like spiritual lessons from just watching it i guess because they keep coming up in these readings i didn't know it was that impactful on me but <laughs> clearly so i always think of like it makes me mad when i'm watching that show and they'll be like a hoarder who has a like horrible conditioned house and they almost always guilt their children and they'll be like this is like you left me you left me that's why the house is dirty and the person that has had like a collection <laughs> collection which is like piles of trash that have been piling up for like 40 years and then they'll be they'll blame their like 20 year old son and they'll put it all on their son and they'll really guilt the sign. And that's the thing is like a lot of people who are dysfunctional, they're afraid of having people leave them. So they'll put in these, like this emphasis on guilt, on like, you owe me this, on you, I deserve this and you're cruel if you like glow up and move away. But the best thing for that son to do would be to move away from this toxic living situation that might be genuinely, literally harmful for their health, not to mention like physical health, not to mention mental and emotional health. So 
their sons, the best thing he could do would be to step into his empowered energy and to leave her behind and not live in that place with her just because she has a fear of abandonment or whatever other issues. The best thing we can do and why we're put on this planet is to live a beautiful life for ourselves and to give ourselves permission to leave anything behind that's toxic, dysfunctional, um, making us feel bad about ourselves. Of course, you know, there's always room for kindness and compassion. But at the end of the day, we're put on this life journey to live a beautiful Beautiful life for ourselves and I feel like you guys are being called to do that and if there's people who are negative or stuck in an old energy around you it's like being very kind of clear about that and admitting to yourself what's going on and being unafraid to leave it and I do feel like a lot of you guys if you make this choice to be brave to claim this kind of new energy of what you deserve and this beautiful new life that you guys are frankly like entitled to like you guys have been through a lot you put up with a lot you deserve happiness and joy I feel like there's so much blessing for you guys like seriously but you have to step into it and claim it and say I am worthy of this I deserve it I'm amazing, I'm special, and I deserve beautiful things in my life. And that's only something only you can do. Your guides can nudge you to that, and I feel like they've tried. And a lot of you guys might have already claimed that, but it's like you need to get that full permission of yourself, of I deserve all the blessings, all the goodness, and allowing, like I think some of you guys, because you grew up in such negative family structures, you're used to it. So it's like when it comes around you, you're like, oh, whatever. And it's like, I see you guys entering a space where there's so much joy, happiness and peace around you all the time. And this is where I feel like at first you're like, whoa, what is going on? Cause you're just so not used to it. But I do think it's gonna become your new normal. And like, again, you deserve that. You deserve happiness. So let me get some final cards. Your reading has gone on really long, but there's so many messages for you guys. So we got breaking trail. A breakthrough is at hand. Narrow pathway. Tread thoughtfully. Crossing bridges. It's time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. So I think a lot of you guys, yeah, I think that's what you're doing right now is like you're purging. A lot of things are coming up that were negative that you've dealt with so much difficulty and negativity and pain and I see in the future or I see that right now a lot of those things are being kind of riled up by this full moon and of course whenever you're watching it's a timeless reading so you can watch it whenever um, and it'll still apply but for those of you guys who are watching when I release it might have to do with that Capricorn full moon that just came around and um, all those things kind of being purged out and brought up and brought to the surface. And I feel like that's a really good thing because I think a lot of you guys need to work past that. And I feel like the healing is just going to keep going on and on. And I think you guys are, a lot of you guys have a really powerful destiny, a really amazing, strong destiny in this pile, like coming through so strong to accomplish amazing things and have a life of your dreams and you deserve it. And I often find that, like I said, when someone has strong Saturn placements and a lot of suffering in their early life, it's like they are able to break through kind of some kind of break out of the, I don't know, some kind of mist or fog or difficulty. And then it's like they're in this beautiful sunshine, lovely era of their life because they've already covered some of those hard lessons so the rest of their life gets to be extra awesome you know um so it's kind of like being an overachiever oh my god as i'm saying that overcoming obstacles you can overcome anything as i'm saying overachieve and i feel like that's what you guys did it's like you kind of got that stuff out of the way and you're so powerful you already covered all those hard lessons it's like the kid in class who does like all the all the extra credit work early so that he can kind of chill for the rest of the semester. I feel like that's you guys. And so the rest of your life, I feel like, you know, get ready for those blessings because I feel like you really deserve them and they are going to come in so amazingly. So let me see if I get one more card. Just let me to pull one more. Let's see. What's the final message for Pile? Wow. Fast visas, expand your horizons and transformation, a fresh new way of living emerges. And I do think it's a new way of living. Like I feel like before in the past, you guys lived in a way that 
was maybe chaotic because of the forces around you, the people around you. And I feel like you're going to be blown away by how peaceful things can be, how lovely things can be, how nice and calm and relaxed. And that is just a really nice life that I think you guys never really thought you were going to have. Like you might have seen kind of people living that way in TV shows or movies, but you were like, oh, that'll never be me. Like I came from this kind of family. I came from this kind of background. Like that's just not going to be me ever. No, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even like it. And maybe that was the truth at that time. But now you're ready for this peace and this calmness and this gorgeous lifestyle. And I feel like you guys are going to get it. And you're going to be blown away by the blessings spirit has for you guys in pile three. So I really hope this helped you guys. Let me know if it did in the comments. What a beautiful energy this was to tap into. I really loved it. And yeah, it was so much power in this pile. Like just love it so thanks for watching guys like i said let me know how it resonated and make sure to like hit the thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe and have notifications on so you find out as soon as i post and if you guys want to watch more of my readings you can check out my patreon i just posted a reading all about what divine feminine archetype you embody so it's a great one to watch if you want to tap into that divine feminine goddess energy inside of you and get more clarity on your venus energy inside and i have a ton of other readings over there as well all kinds of subjects so definitely check it out link in my description if you want to join us on patreon and if you want a private one-on-one reading with me and more clarity on your situation or whatever is going on in your life you can also check out the link in my description for that briarrosetarot.com and get a private one-on-one session with me so yeah that's about it i will be back very soon for another reading so i'm sending you guys so much love and light and i will see you guys then take care bye Hey pal four, so we're doing today's reading a little bit differently and we're starting off with some oracle cards and then we'll get into the tarot a little bit later, which you guys got making a choice, ghost lands, and talisman. So I feel like a lot of you guys are probably dealing with a choice right now. Um, Maybe it's something you guys have been contemplating for a really long time, spirit has put in your heart, and I am feeling like there's a message that some of you guys are a little hesitant or scared, but there is a message from spirit that where you're at right now is kind of already, there's not that much going on. Like, you're already ready for something new. Like where you're at now is not some amazing place that you're going to be so sad to leave. You know what I mean? So if that's the case, why not be bold and take the kind of daunting choice that makes you a little bit scared if you're feeling called to it by spirit if it's making your heart sing and feel alive yeah it's probably a little bit scary compared to an energy that's maybe a little easier but is very stagnant and kind of boring it's always going to be a little scarier to like take a risk go out on a limb try something new but that's where we find so much excitement so much glory and what life is all about which is about feeling alive feeling um excited feeling like you can't predict everything sometimes i think we can get very into like routines especially nowadays when things can be kind of easy in the modern era so it's easy to just stay in your comfort zone and maybe stay where something is comfortable like having a routine of just kind of going to work coming home watching tv cooking something like microwaving something and eating it like that's easy right it's comfortable You don't have to try that hard, but it's not really going to bring us fulfillment or make us feel alive and feel like we're living our life to the fullest and feel like we, you know, are truly doing whatever we're put on this earth to do. And I, I think part of the reason we're put on earth is to feel alive. Like there's a reason why God made like the planet so beautiful, right? I mean, there's a reason why Taurus is important and Taurus covers all of this. There's a reason why food tastes really good. There's a reason why like we have five senses and being in love feels so amazing. It's because, you know, we're supposed to be humans. We're supposed to experience those things. We're not just supposed to be up in an ivory tower intellectually processing things because we can do that from the other side as well. And one of the things that the Ghostlands card represents can also be being stuck in the past or being 
living in the future and kind of a memory or like a possible future. And so that's why it's so important for us to be rooted in like reality and really living life and really involved in life and not just kind of watching it pass by, but like taking an active role, you know, and actually experiencing things. And so sometimes that's going to be nerve wracking. Like whenever you have some skin in the game, so to speak, like you're obviously going to be nervous. You're going to be, um, a little bit on edge, you know, when we're just kind of looking back intellectually, and we're not kind of taking a risk, like it's pretty, like I said, very easy, and we can feel very confident and everything's fine. But that's not where we experience life. We experience life when, you know, even when we get our heart broken, or when we have the most amazing meal we've ever had, or we try something new, or we travel somewhere new. So I feel like this is a call to you guys to really be bold with this. And the talisman card also can talk about how no matter what happens in life like you'll be okay you're exactly where you should be you're being guided and everything is happening and unfolding like it should so we can always trust that if we're feeling called to make a choice then that is the right choice for us and even though it might seem risky or scary or we're a little nervous i feel like being bold is what you guys are being called to do and we also got two more cards for you pile four we got coming to life and we got details details so i do feel like there's some details that might need to be worked out about this certain situation maybe something that you know isn't there's like multiple factors at play and things need to be aligned correctly and maybe paperwork or um getting things ready and preparing in advance is something that is going to be involved with this situation. And I feel like spirit is calling for you to get started on that and start working on it and have it come together. Because I do feel like you guys, this is an opportunity for you to really come to life and be very invested and invigorated and just living your best life, feeling things, getting excited, getting into it. I feel like some of you guys have been maybe a little bit in hermit mode or just processing things and just kind of um, maybe like holding yourself away from the world as you process certain things. And that's okay. Of course, life has stages and it's okay to go into hermit mode sometimes and there can be a lot of value in that. But I see you guys kind of returning to life and getting involved in things that bring you a lot of joy and a lot of happiness. And I feel like Spirit is saying, make the bold choice here. Just go for what yeah, scares you a little bit because that's really where I think your destiny, the best destiny for you is going to lie. Um, and, and to really get started on like the work that it's going to involve, because I do feel like there's a lot of kind of moving parts with this situation. So you guys might have to fill out a lot of paperwork or forms or, um, plan something in advance with this. I'm not sure what exactly, but it does seem like there's a lot of things that kind of have to line up. So I feel like go ahead and start getting ready and start preparing and stop being so afraid is the message I just heard in my head. So maybe some of you guys are afraid of like, what's going to happen if I do this? What is that going to mean for me? Like things are pretty comfortable as they are, but I feel like the message for you guys is like, you're already not that happy. Like you're not at the pinnacle of your happiness. If you were, I would tell you like, sure, take it easy. But I feel like a lot of you guys are wanting something more. Maybe you've been feeling a little empty lately, feeling a little bored, feeling like the, this kind of call to adventure is what I'm getting. I'm seeing literally like a ship sailing across the sea. So maybe some of you guys want to move um, to somewhere really new and different than where you've been. Um, but I feel like this is a pile that you guys would do well with some adventure. Maybe you guys are naturally kind of adventurous souls and you haven't been in that energy lately. And now you're kind of being called to like actively seek that out. But let me get some Astrodice for pile four spirit. Can you get us some Astrodice? Oh, okay. That one fell on the ground. Um, and that one, it said seventh house. Then we have Neptune and Cancer. So two water signs. Um, let me spin this dice again and see what what it what number we get. So we got the third house, Gemini, and that can indicate short-term travel. So again, with the travel energy, um, 
And Gemini, like all Mercury ruled signs, can really indicate details, like I said, like paperwork and kind of logistics. So I really feel like there's a heavy emphasis on that. And also, I think Gemini is great at communicating how they feel. And I feel like for some of you guys, you need to be willing to communicate that with yourselves. I'm seeing some of you guys write down in a journal or just keeping track of like, okay, how am I feeling? thinking and feeling about this and let me be really honest with myself about my desires because I think sometimes in life like we're not fully willing to ask for what we want maybe we attach judgment to our own ideas of what we should want or someone tells us like well you have a great job you should be happy you know like you should be grateful because you're getting an amazing salary and you shouldn't leave that and you should be um that sh you should be thrilled and that should be good enough for you and like maybe it's not good enough for us and maybe it's fine if it's good enough for someone else but it's just not right for us maybe it's not even a matter of good or bad it's just it is what it is and it doesn't align with me and so i feel like with gemini it's about getting really clear about i want this and i feel this and i think this and this makes me happy and um being willing to like talk to yourself about that and saying that kind of out loud like really getting clear on it not just thinking like oh i hope this makes me happy well maybe all my friends are like dating so maybe dating would make me happy but if that's not your personality type and you're not like a super big relationship person maybe it won't maybe um earning more money won't make you happy if that's just not what you want you know um so everyone's different and i think what it's okay to have any kind of life as long as you're not hurting someone um, in like a horrible way. But I think that we have to get really clear about what that is. And that's like the first step. Then we have Neptune and Cancer. So that's interesting. Some watery energy and water can be very dreamy and ethereal, psychic. And so um, maybe you guys have kind of been in that realm for a long time because I feel like this is a call for you guys to kind of enter more of your fire or earth energy being rooted more in like physical reality not so much water and air which can be kind of dreamy and in their heads and we do have an air sign over there with gemini um but i feel like a lot of you guys with cancer it could be leaving behind a family or leaving behind some kind of family dynamic or something and with neptune it can also indicate being too much in your head and also what's coming to my mind is with neptune and with cancer they both can be very um like remembrance type energy like always remembering things and very uh kind of in the past a little bit um and so i do feel like there's a call that if you've had thoughts of your past coming up and you keep thinking about like oh that's how it was back then it was so nice back then i wonder if i made the right choice maybe i shouldn't have done that i feel like you should know that you did make the right choice and whatever was in your past wasn't working for you for whatever reason so it's like you guys did need to leave that behind and don't be glamorizing that too much because i find like whenever i have tried to like i don't know go back to something that kind of spirit had phased out of my life it's so funny because i'm like this totally doesn't resonate with me anymore and i was just watching something like that happen on like a reality show recently someone like temporarily got back together with their ex and they were like oh my god i'm so glad i'm not with them and i feel that like for me whenever i've you know tried to patch up old relationships that kind of phased out of my life but i was like maybe i was too harsh let me contact them i'm always like oh like when we meet up i'm like oh this is why that kind of phase out of my life and it's not even anything against them it's not like oh they're a horrible person it's like i'm just at a different energy right now and what made me happy in my past or what aligned with me in my past isn't what aligns with me right now and that's okay it's okay to change in fact it's a good thing to change and to grow for both sides to change and to grow it doesn't mean that they're a horrible person and that you know they're just awful and like they need to be exiled from your life forever. But for right now, maybe it's not in alignment with you. And maybe in the future, maybe you guys will circle back and energies will realign and maybe they won't. But that's the thing is like, I think in life, it's so great to not be kind of holding on to something really tightly, to be open to like whatever spirit wants to bring to you. So if spirit wants to bring that relationship back, you know, it will. And if spirit wants to bring you a new relationship, it will. But I think sometimes we can like glamorize or 
put up on a pedestal the past and make it in our mind into like this perfect era, this perfect time when the reality is if we left it, it was probably for a good reason. It was probably something that was nagging at us for a while and we finally made that choice and I bet if you went back to then you'd be like oh my god I can't even put up with this for a day I'm so glad to be out of this so yeah I, I think for some of you guys it's like take these dreams or these thoughts you're having from dreamland into reality make it an actual thing don't just think about it and dream on it and be in Neptune mode where you're imagining it a million times and fantasizing about it or in cancer mode where you're kind of um, reminiscing about it and you know remembering and you want to be living rooted in reality um, and grounded in reality. I'm going to roll these one more time because we're telling me to even though I didn't do this for any other pile. So we got Mercury. Oh my god. <laughs> They gave me the exact same signs. Okay, so I guess they're just clarifying that message that that was the right message for you guys because we literally got exactly got Pisces and then we got Mercury which rules Gemini. So yeah, I think with the Mercury energy, a lot of details and then I guess, you know, make this a reality. Don't be too Neptunian about it. Um, so let's move on to the tarot and let's see what messages the tarot has for pile four. Okay, so we got the Nine of Cups reversed. Wow. Knight of Pentacles reversed. So with the Nine of Cups reversed, it can be a really strong message that like you're not as happy as you are, as you might be. Um, you're not very happy right now in your current situation. You're not as happy as you could be. And I think that's something you should pay attention to. And I think a lot of times when someone's unhappy, a lot of people will say things like, well, nothing's perfect, no job is perfect, or no family is perfect, or no relationship is perfect, but life should be filling our cup in a, a lot of deep ways. And yes, there's times when we have to work really hard and like keep our nose to the grindstone and just focus and just work through hardship. But also we need to also take stock of like this really isn't fulfilling me and I'm feeling spirit just tugging on my attention and I'm feeling spirit tell me that there's something more for me. And that's valuable and important and we need to pay attention to it. It's not an accident or a fluke or just some random thing spirit decided to give us for no reason. It's something we really need to pay attention to. And it's something we need to very much balance and you know be open to and so i do feel like a lot of you guys are kind of leaving behind an old situation that maybe it worked for you at one time or maybe you even manifested it or glorified this energy at a certain point in your life but now it feels like you're ready for something new you're ready for something a little bit bolder that i think yeah, might scare you a little bit, might make you a little bit nervous. And I do feel like there's also this kind of message, again, of needing to get the details in order and needing to be very um, organized with it and needing to kind of take this Knight of Pentacles vibe of like taking care of all the details and coming into it. And also with the Knight being reversed, the Knights can be very kind of over enthusiastic not as much as the page but I think it's like don't don't just be like so enthusiastic so you're just kind of like everything's gonna work out it'll be awesome it'll be fine you know sometimes we can get into that like energized energy and kind of burn ourselves out where we're just so excited for something but it's like oh wait did you pack did you get the details did you did you sign the like forms because the forms aren't as much fun to sign right like it's not as fun to like take care of those kind of mercurial details at least not for me but that's what we need to do to make it happen um let me get some more cards and two of pentacles can definitely be that decision yet again okay so we got the four of wands so i definitely feel like you guys are making a decision and then we have the round table aka the wheel of fortune so wow two incredibly positive cards coming out to end this so the four of wands is a super celebratory happy energy um and then we got the wheel of fortune so 
a lot of you guys, maybe you need some assurance that if you make this choice that might be a little daunting and might be a little nerve wracking, that it's going to work out incredibly well in your favor. I do feel like you guys are nervous about whatever this is and kind of still on the fence about it and kind of still like, oh, should I do it? And I feel like this is a definite kind of yes. Like I think it's saying that the this kind of beautiful, happy, bold life you guys want to be living is on the other side of this tough decision and yes you guys are kind of weighing the options now with the two of pentacles but i feel like once you i feel like if you guys choose that boldness i also feel like spirit's going to keep pulling on you until you make the bold choice and i'm thinking of past choices i made where i remember like i resisted the message from spirit at first i was like no 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 and that at least for me and i think for most people when you don't listen the first time spirit just keeps pulling at you and making more and more things in your life kind of, I don't want to say fall apart, but making whatever that situation is like less and less viable until you're like, okay, I guess I have to do this. I don't really have a choice. So the earlier we can kind of go along and heed that little whisper before it's turning into a full blown, like loudspeaker in your ear, I think the better for all of us. Um, but yeah, I think this this can be really a beautiful energy. And the Four of Wands is literally a card of like such a huge celebration, such a happy moment with like being surrounded by community, marriage, commitments. It can represent all those things. Obviously, tarot cards have multiple meanings. And so if that's something maybe you guys have wanted or you've been like, I'm in my current energy and it's kind of stagnant and like I'm not really getting any dates and like nothing's really happening that can definitely be a sign of like you gotta try something new it's kind of like when you're cooking and like you make something really bland like you make chicken soup and it's just really really bland what do you do you go over and you grab the salt and you like throw a bunch of salt in or you grab some lemon and or vinegar and you add some acid in it or you add a bunch of red pepper flakes but you don't add in like something bland, like a bunch of potatoes, you know, you're not like, oh, it's really kind of bland and flavorless. Um, let me add in some plain rice or let me add in some potato or some soggy bread. Like that wouldn't make it taste any better. So if you're a cook, you know that you got to add a squeeze of lemon or a dash of salt or some red pepper flakes or whatever, just to make it like, um, you know, a lot more interesting. And I feel like when we're when we're faced with like a bland, boring life, sometimes the solution is you got to spice it up, you got to throw some red pepper flakes in there, you got to, you know, throw a bunch of salt in or pour some vinegar and do something with it. Because it's through sometimes even those unpleasant experiences, like maybe there is an experience in life that does seem like vinegary, like it's, it's a there's some kind of annoyance or struggle. But it's I think it's those moments in life that a lot of times we actually look back on with the most wistfulness, like the love situation where we were really in love with someone, but it didn't work out. But like we go back and we think about like, oh, I loved them so much. And that moment becomes kind of glamorized in our mind because there's something about that struggle. There's something about figuring things out that makes you feel alive. So knowing that it's like even the worst experiences can be super amazing and we can look back on it really fondly and be like I'm so glad I experienced it because I think it's like wouldn't you rather be in love and I think the phrase from I think Shakespeare is it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all but I don't know if that's actually Shakespeare maybe it's someone else but I think it's him so I mean if Shakespeare is saying it it must be true um and I feel like that's common logic like most of us would rather have a breakup that you know we really loved someone and it was a great love and it was a really painful breakup. At least we got to say we experienced love than to have never had it happen at all. So again, there's always something beautiful that we can get out of the pain, out of the hardship, out of the difficulty. And I think this is a real call for you guys to just put yourself out there to step out there and be bold and go for it and not hold yourself back in like the safety zone. Cause nothing really happens in the safety zone. It's always when you're kind of living life and, nervous doing things by the skin of your teeth like that that that's when the exciting amazing things happen so yeah let me get some message cards for pile four spirit can you give us some message cards for pile four and by the way i'm not saying bad things will happen because we did get the four of wands and the wheel of fortune so it does bode well and it says that like 
hopefully things will really be on your side. So we got rest, renew, recharge. What does your body crave and need right now? And then the universe rewards motion. What guided action can you take today? So these are kind of a little bit um, contradictory, but I think that maybe this is the energy you guys have been in. You've been resting. You've been recharging your batteries. If you haven't been, it's definitely a call for you guys to do that. And I also feel like maybe before this big decision, there might be a little bit of a lag period where you guys can kind of rest up, recharge yourself. Once I think sometimes like there's a difference between active rest and just like just lazing around and just hanging out and we don't really feel as rested and like staying up all night watching Netflix. We're not going to really feel super rested after that. Um, so I think maybe if you guys know that you're going to go on this grand adventure and it's going to be really exciting, maybe you will actively rest and really put emphasis on like appreciating this kind of moment of pause you're in right now rather than just being like, I'm so bored. What's going to happen next? And once you have this to look forward to, this change, whatever it is, you will, it'll make your like daily life a lot easier in a way. But the universe rewards motion. And that's definitely the kind of theme of this reading is like, if you're feeling called to do something, it's not enough just to think about it and just to dream about it and just to wonder and hope and weigh the options a million times and go back and forth in our mind over and over. It's really important that we kind of come through and actually do it. And Spirit just told me something about perfect timing. And Spirit is showing me a bunch of examples in my mind when I've experienced perfect timing. Like when, you know, you like say you walk out of your apartment and someone's like, like a really cute guy is standing there right at that moment as you pass him or you are like pulling out of, you know, a shopping center and with your car and you hit every single green light and stuff like that is what Spirit's showing me in my mind. And like crazy timing where you're like, oh my God, this could have been seconds earlier. And so I feel like they want me to convey to you guys a message that, um, that you guys are on perfect timing. And I think some of you guys are like, I wasted time or I'm not on the right timeline. Or like maybe you're reminiscing about the past because you do feel that you have wasted some of your life or that those were the good old days. And like, now I'm just stuck in this stagnant energy and like everything's so boring. And you need to know that like the best years and days and months and everything is ahead of you guys. But you need to be the one who's bold enough to make that choice because we do have free will. And so um, we have to be the ones to actually make that choice to put ourselves out there and to actually go for it and to actually do it. So I think you guys are on perfect timing. I don't think you should be upset about like I've been in hermit mode. That's perfect. So you guys have probably done a lot of learning, a lot of growing, a lot of shadow work. And you're going to be coming back to this, whatever this is, better than ever and so invigorated and ready for this beautiful new challenge and new energy. So that's what you guys have been doing. And that's beautiful. You have been kind of resting and renewing energetically speaking. And I feel like you're just you have so much more energy. I'm thinking of like when I'll wait a few days between working out and I just will like be like, having so much energy, I'll be wanting to do sprints, which is not usually necessarily something I love doing. But it's like you just have this energy built up because you rested so much. So think of yourself as that like you're ready to like kill it on the treadmill and just sprint as fast as you can. And that's a good thing. You're energetically very charged up and ready to go. Let me get some one more card for pile four. come together, we need each other. So I think this is a call to like, have more friends, have more fellowship, spend more time with others, enjoy basking in the energy of others. Again, when we're in hermit mode, we can kind of get into that energy where we're just like in our own energy all the time and we're not really used to dealing with others. And, you know, I think it's really, there's so much to be gained from fellowship with others, from relationships, from that special human connection. So maybe this is a call for you guys to kind of move out of that mode and like, Put yourself out there, even if it's just like going to like the farmer's market on Sunday and chatting with the vendors or, you know, going out to a bar by yourself and chatting with the bartender and like, you never know what could happen. You could have a really cute guy come up to you and, you know, or a cute girl or whatever. Um, but I feel like a lot of you guys, it's like be bold, live your life because 
life is short, right? And we have a limited time on this earth and we might as well make the most of it and have fun while we're here. But let's get some more um, cards for you guys, some final Oracle cards. Let's get some final cards. So we got wise leader. You are a beacon for others. Staying focused, hold the course, taking shelter. The answers are within. And let's get one final card for pile four spirit. If it will ever come out, um, we got stepping into power. You are strong beyond measure. And I think you guys need to know that, that you are so strong and powerful. And some, some of you guys, I feel maybe you have been kind of doubting yourself or you've been in a stagnant situation and now you don't really see how powerful and vibrant and strong you are. And also you need to hear a message that anything you manifested in the past, you can manifest in this new version of your life so if you were like oh back then i was dating the best guy and we broke up like you can have that again you can have whatever you want or or back in the day i was so disciplined i like i was so good at my schoolwork and now i'm such a mess okay you can do it again you have that same person inside of you you are the same person so you can choose to access that power whenever you guys want i think you guys don't realize how strong you are how many people are drawn to you how many opportunities you guys have that at any choice at any point you can choose to access that power and choose to step into it and choose to have this amazing life you want so don't waste time thinking about it or doubting it or being like, I don't know, like just go for it, you know, just do it. And don't, I think you guys already know these answers. I feel, I feel you're already feeling called towards it. And I think you need to know that you have been on the right path. If you felt like you've been second guessing lately, I know we just had this full moon in Capricorn, although this is a timeless reading, so you can watch whenever, but maybe with this full moon in Capricorn, for some of you guys, it might've brought up feelings like doubting your choices or looking back with nostalgia about certain things and feeling like, did I make the right choice? And I feel like you need to know you did. And so you're on the right path. You're going in the right direction. And anything that was removed from your life was removed for a reason. I just keep hearing in my mind, which came up in another pile, I can't remember which, but Beyonce all night and the line um, nothing real can be threatened and I think that's really true anything that's for us is always going to be for us anyone that's for us is always going to be with us you know what I mean so if something is removed from your life it's for a reason it's not for us to doubt and second guess and wonder why it's like okay that's cool like I know for me I like to cook and so I'll sometimes cook different recipes and sometimes I'm like I don't understand why is that in there why is that this and um usually when i put it in if it's from a good light cook it always tastes amazing i just made this orange chocolate cake by nigella lawson and it was so good and it involves pureeing two like um boiling two whole oranges and then blending them in a blender and i was like what is this like this is odd but it tasted amazing and so sometimes we don't understand why a certain ingredient in our life has taken place or why why is this happening to me? How could I possibly benefit from it? But there's a reason for it and there's a purpose for it. And we have to trust that in the end, it's all going to work out okay. And that spirit is guiding us, taking care of us. And that that was no accident. It's not like they just randomly decided like, oh, I'm just going to have this relationship end because uh, whatever. Spirit is always doing things for our greatest and highest good. Let me get one final card for pile four. Not that card. I don't know what that one is. Support is all around you and gates of triumph. Success expands in your life. So really positivity coming through at the end for you guys. You need to know that so many people like you, will support you. And I feel like if you have been kind of hermiting away from the world, you need to know that your tribe is around you, is with you, is supporting you, and they will flock to you. But you have to put yourself out there. You have to be bold and willing to step out and also to make this choice, whatever this is. But I think you know the answer inside pile four. So yeah, you guys have a lot of positivity coming through. Really hope it resonated. Let me know if it did in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. And make sure to give this reading a big thumbs up. Hit the like button, you guys. And make sure to subscribe and have notifications on so you can find out as soon as I post. And if you like my readings and would like to check out my additional readings, 
you can check out my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about what divine feminine archetype you embody. And there's a ton of extra readings over there as well. All kinds of subjects on my Patreon. So click the link in my bio if you want to join us over there. And if you want a private one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, you can also get that at the link in my bio about whatever you kind of want in your life, pretty much, um, we can talk about. So link in my description for that as well, firerosetarot.com. I am sending you guys so much love and light. I hope you all have an amazing day and take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time. Bye.